I could have your attention, please. Um, we're going to get this uh, get this going. I'm Joe Tirio. I'm a county clerk and representing the clerk's office today and the chairman of the electoral board. To my left is Robin Shetley. She's uh, representing the uh, circuit clerk of the courts. And to my right is Tom Cahill representing the state's attorney's office. The board is convened to hear the petitions of the objectors as listed in the McHenry County Electoral Board docket for January 6, 2023. The objections were filed on 12-29-22. A notice of call were given to the County Board uh, Electoral Board on 1-3 of 23. The board's notices of today's hearing were served on the parties as required by Illinois Election Code or by signed waiver. Uh, to my fellow board members, is there uh, a motion to adopt the administrative rules? I'll make the motion to adopt the administrative rules. Um, I'll second the motion. Okay, and I also vote in favor. So I'll ask that you sign. just so that all are aware that this meeting is being recorded and in fact uh, live streamed. The camera is right above the big H in McHenry over there, uh, just so that you're aware. I'd also ask as a courtesy to silence your, your cell phones. Um, the, uh, the hearing is subject to the Open Meetings Act and consequently uh, was posted 48 hours in advance and includes an opportunity for public comment. Um, do we have anybody signed up for public comment? We did not. We don't. Very good. All right. The stocket contains eight objections, the first of which is uh, Bruce Johnson versus Deanna Darling. Are both parties ready to proceed? We are. Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'd ask that you identify yourselves for the court reporter. Uh, state your name, the firm, if any, and your address, and we'll start with uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Bruce Johnson, uh, 204 Country Commons Road, Trout Valley, Illinois. And, uh, uh, Deanna Darling, 824 Borough Circle, Cary, Illinois. Attorney Jeannie Ridings with KRV Legal, 125 South Virginia Street in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Excellent. And uh, would you administer the oaths, Gretchen? Just, well, I'll just uh, to would you raise your right hands, yes, please? Yeah. Yes. Do you solemnly swear the testimony that you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. Thank you. And so we will uh, entertain preliminary motions by the parties, starting with uh, Mr. Johnson. You may proceed. Great. Thank you. Is this live? Does it need to be turned on? Or it's live. We can it hear is. you fine. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank yep. you. Okay, uh, once again, my name is Bruce Johnson. I reside at 204 Country Commons Road in, Ellen, in uh, Trout Valley, Illinois. I'm a registered voter at this address and reside within Cary School District Number 26. I'm a, citizen, I'm a citizen desirous of seeing to that the laws governing the filing of nomination papers for the nomination to the member of the Board of Education of Cary Community Consolidated School District Number 26 in the state of Illinois are properly complied with and that only qualified candidates have their names appear on the ballot as candidate for said office. And therefore, objector makes the following objections to the nomination papers of Deanna D. Darling, the candidate for nomination to the office of the member of the Board of Education of Cary Community Consolidated School District Number 26 of the state of Illinois and, and files the same herewith and states that the said nomination papers are insufficient in law Objector states that the nomination papers here and con contested consist of various sheets allegedly containing the ballot and legal signatures of um, of 79 individuals. Uh, the individual objections cited herein were specifically reduce the number of valid signatures by 45 or to the number of 34 uh, or 16 below the statutory minimum of 50. 
Uh, my pleading contains the specific of the case, as you'll see outlined in my petition. And I have or would like to submit to the, uh, to the uh, honorable bench here uh, Exhibit A, which contains uh, certified copies of permanent records as part of my case. Is, uh, is this a good time to uh, take exhibits? You should be on. Yeah, yeah, you can you can take those exhibits if, if it's if it's not objected to. If it's objected to, a foundation would need to be set. Okay. May I review the exhibit before it's tendered to the board? Certainly. Sure. Thank you. Do you want to proceed with your discussion, or do we need to wait until the uh, That's okay. part of my my next step here. Okay. So. Um, These appear to be certified uh, records obtained from the county clerk's office. I would have no objection to foundation. I may have other objections, but I'll raise those as they arise. Okay. Deborah, I'll take those for you. I'm sorry. Do we want to? Are we going to look at these as a whole, or are we going to look at them one uh, individual at a at a time? We'll probably have to do one at a time. We'll go through kind of the list. So those are numbered up in the top right corner as to which uh, page and line number they refer to. Okay, so as we come to them, it's okay. just I'll come and get the one that you're referring to. So we're going to do just them that way. Okay, okay, so one at a time. Okay, very good. And then I'll this should be fun. Yes. <laughs> okay. And, and I should just also indicate for those uh, here. We have also with us Norm Vinton, who acts as the board's uh, attorney. And then we have uh, Deb Nieto, who is about to sit down. She's our uh, chief uh, deputy in the clerk's office. And uh, Chris Smith, who is a supervisor in the clerk's office, uh, helping us out today. Great. Um, may I? You may. Uh, before I proceed, I'd like to call uh, uh, witnesses to the stand, uh, uh, in particular the circulators of the petitions. I don't see any issue with that. Do you have an issue? No. With that? Okay. Uh, I'd like to call Cynthia Pills to the witness stand. Okay. And um, would we just have her probably sit next to her since the microphone's there? Okay. Sure. Is Cynthia here? Apparently not. Oh, so there, Cynthia is not here? Okay. Uh, That's Dan, a question. I, I don't they, know who Cynthia is, so I didn't. Okay, know. she was one of the circulators of pages one and two for. Uh, for Deanna Darling's uh, nomination papers. Okay. I had some questions on uh, the process that she used. Oh, She's I'm, not required to be here. Right, uh, yes. Okay. You, yeah. okay. I, I, thought you were, I thought you knew that she was in here. Okay. I, I, I did not. No, I, okay. didn't, I don't know who Cynthia is. So. Okay. okay, nor do I. Okay. Uh, the second witness I'd like to call is Deanna Darling as a circulator. Okay. I'm sorry, who? Me? Deanna Darling. Okay as a circulator of her petition? There have been no subpoenas issued. For the record, I would object to calling the candidate as a witness, no subpoena having been issued. We will present testimony in our case if that's necessary. Okay. Um, is it typical that we would have to subpoena? Yeah, it's almost like an adverse party, so you can call an adverse party in your case in chief. So, so would we need a subpoena to do this before? You would not. No. Okay. I mean, if you want to make sure somebody is here, because a candidate doesn't really need to be here right. if they're represented by counsel. Right. But if you want to make sure somebody is here, such as that other circulator, you would have to serve them with a subpoena. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Miss Darling being here and she's an adverse party, she can be called. Thoughts, Mr. Cahill? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. So we'll allow her to be called. Yes. Okay, so I'd like to call Deanna Darling to the witness stand. Very well. Is that the witness stand? That's, uh, that's okay. the witness stand. <laughs> uh, good morning, Deanna. Good morning. All right. Um, so just a couple of quick questions on the actual petitions that you circulated. I see that you were the circulator on uh, sheets number three, four, and number eight. So specified in your uh, nomination papers. That is correct. Okay, great. Um, one question I have is, uh, how did you go about obtaining the signatures? Was it door-to-door -door or, or in person at, at one location? Objection. 
I object on the basis of relevance. The bases for the objector's objection are set forth in here, none of which involve any impropriety in the manner in which the petitions were circulated. And it's, I, I, it's my understanding that it's, that, well, your thoughts, uh, attorney? Yeah, here, uh, I, I think Ms. Ridings is correct that the objections here, the signature, signatures aren't registered or the signatures don't match. Right. Um, it, there is not uh, an allegation that there's some error in the circulation themselves. It's just that the signatures don't match. So I, I would agree that I don't think that it's relevant. And, and the parties are bound to the complaint or the objection specifically found in their objection. You right. can't go beyond that. Right. Agreed. So I would, yeah, I would uh, sustain the objection. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. Uh, next question I have is, did you personally witness each of these signatures on the petitions that you gathered? Same objection. And again, I, I think, on the, yeah. Based on previous analysis, analysis I would uh, sustain that objection as well. Agreed. Okay, one last question. Um, did anyone else collect any of the signatures on any of the sheets that you collected? Same objection. And again, I would sustain based on the same analysis. Right, and, and we, we have to, if it's, if it's not entirely clear, um, we have to work from what it is that you've provided us pretty explicitly. Okay, thank you. That was all my questions. Okay. Um, in terms of, uh, do we want to work through your specific objections then? Yes. That you have? Yes. Okay. So you're going to lead us through that. So that's correct. We, okay. That's correct. So I, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, submitting the documents page by page. Yes. Yeah. Line by line. So okay. Let me <clears throat> make sure I don't spill my coffee on them. <laughs> Okay, so uh, being said, let me just make sure I'm following the, the rule. Uh, I'm find the right paper here. There we go. So I, uh, so following the uh, uh, the complaint that I filed here, let's go to uh, uh, paragraph two. Mm -hmm. I'm calling out sheet number three, line number seven, Anthony Allard. And the objection here is? The objection here is, I'm sorry, um, <coughs> a sign or not registered at that address. Okay. In fact, and in fact, there's no, no Anthony Allard registered anywhere uh, in the records of McHenry County that we were able to find. Okay. So I don't have a, a certif certified copy of Mr. Allard's uh, information. Okay, okay. So I object to his signature being on, on uh, sheet number three, not line number seven. Okay. And um, Thoughts, Mr. Vinton, should we allow the uh, candidate to respond to these individually, or uh, I? Do you have a I would probably say it'd be more efficient to do it yeah. that way. All right. Yeah, so I, yeah. I would prefer to have uh, the objector bear the burden to meet his burden. After which, if he's done that, then I would present my case respectfully. In total, are you talking in total. About? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. And total for all of the, for all of this particular case with Ms. Darling. That would be my preference, and I think that's what the rules okay. suggest. Okay. Right. Um, uh, should we go on to Mr. John then? Yes. Yeah, so if I'm able to proceed, I, I just want to get, yep. make sure I understood the uh, uh, the comment there. So yes, on to uh, section two, line uh, B, uh, sheet number four, line number seven, uh, Tommy John. There's no record of him in the county after trying to pull uh, certified copies and uh, no records found. And uh, then on to C then? Yes, on to line number C, sheet number four, line nine, a Lucas Kirbyson, uh, not registered at that address. 
And I believe once again, you know, there's a record for them. So if you look for and for D and for line D, same thing. Uh, sheet number four, line number ten, Karen Kirbyson, uh, no record found. So. And, and are there uh, records amongst that evidence that indicate that they were not found? I, I have no record to, to draw from, so uh, I, would, uh, I had requested those records and they were not able to be obtained through the county clerk's office. Okay. Right. So okay. I, I object to all four of those signatures, the signers not being registered at that address. Okay. And uh, Tom or Robin, do you have any other questions or points? Or? Did you ask the clerk's office, do you, I don't know, do you give something out that would say no records found? We do that in the circuit clerk, so I'm curious. I, I, could you have obtained something that says no records found? Um, in fact, I could refer to Ms. Nito. Um, um, I gave her a complete list of all the objections. Well, actually, all the signatures on all the petitions that Ms. Darling had, had uh, furnished and highlighted the ones that I had in question and gave them to the uh, clerk's office, and they were able to pull every record that they have had access to. And so these four were not found at all in the database. And Objection I, I believe, to the foundation of that statement. I would sustain that, yeah. May I call on Ms. Nito to, to verify? I would object to calling a uh, member of the board as a witness. <clears throat> she's not, well, she's not technically a member of the board. I think that uh, I think it's relevant to the case I need to, okay. to, to get that answer I right. simple request would you be amenable to answering that question Certainly. okay um, the request that came from mr. Johnson was for certified copies including respectfully I, I object mm -hmm. as a witness she has not been sworn yeah good point good point Please uh, raise your right oh you do want to swear? yeah go ahead yeah. Please raise your hand, please. You saw Ms. Wright's testimony that you're about to give in this cause. I'll be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. And Norm, would you pass the mic down to her? So yes, I will. It's on. So the specific request that came from Mr. Johnson was for certified records. The list included uh, petition pages for the candidate with highlights of which certified records he requested um, and specifically requested certified copies of a record that included signature address and um, registration information so we provided the ones that we could find we were not individually requested for no record found information um, but we did, in records where we did not find anything, we did not provide a certified copy. That's correct. Okay. All right, thanks. Does the candidate have any cross based on that? No. Paragraph three? Yes, uh, moving on to paragraph three, which uh, signer is not found in district. Um, refer to uh, uh, line A, sheet number five, which actually a typo was there. It should be actually it actually should reflect sheet number six, line number four, uh, for a Lauren and Doubter. I have the uh, I have the certified copy of her uh, record here. And according to uh, uh, the signature page, she, she signed with an illegible city. It did not refer to Cary, and the, and the city itself is actually illegible. So your, your argument says that she's not in the district. Right. So I, I, the, the city is really unknown. So I don't know what district she's in. Um, upon attaining 
the public record, it does indicate Carrie, but that's not what she had indicated on her signature uh, and on her line paint, uh, the line that she had completed. And then moving on to uh, section three. Uh, just, just a moment, just oh, to sorry. give it a look here real quick. Okay, got it. So, so your paragraph three A refers to a Lauren Dowder. And the record we have is a Laura Dorfler. Right. It was um, it just a case of it was hard to read her? Yeah, it was, the whole line was very illegible, so it's hard to distinguish what her printed name was, as well as the as well as the city. in the yeah, yeah, it should be in the packet. Get that done. That's... You say that should be six four. Correct, right. yeah, sheet six line four. argument is that she's not in district is that correct from what I could ascertain from from the line here it's very unclear what the city was um, so my plain, my complaint was uh, um, not in city um, obviously upon pulling the certified record it does indicate she does live in Cary um, but let me just look at her I believe even her signature does not match. Let's see. So did I would object to the commentary as to additional or other objections that have not been set forth in the objection itself. Yeah, I, I sustain. 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 Yes. Yeah. So do you have anything that demonstrates that she's not in the district as stated? That was your statement, right? Yeah, not in district. Do you have anything that? Just based solely on the, on the sign on the petition itself. That's that's where the area of confusion is. It, it just is very okay. um, uncertain. Okay. In my mind, thank you. Okay. Any questions? Other questions? No. Um, should we go on to B? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, item B, sheet six, line nine, Jen. Knight is what I reference. I believe her full name is Jennifer Knight. Um, on the, I, I contest that one on the basis that the signature doesn't match. Well, the objection is that the signer is not in district on your petition. Yes, well, because the address is also illegible, so um, I can't make out what the street number name is on that particular line item. So, once again, it's a big question. It's a six, um, nine. Where do they live? And then what's looking at the signature that doesn't match either. Again, I didn't move to strike any testimony as to an additional objection that was not made. Sustained. 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 Yeah. So. All right. And do we have? Uh, so do you? Do we have um, a uh, any supporting documentation for Ms. Knight? 
of the uh, certified copy here is what I'd like to submit to the court. So. Okay. Um, so this has their address at 537 South Prairie Street, which um, yeah, it's close. I don't, I don't, yeah, something like Prairie Street. Yeah. Um, is that is does she live within the the district? Uh, based on the the, the uh, certified record, I would I would I would agree that she does. Okay. Should we move on to um, the uh, fourth Paragraph section? four. Yeah, we have a lot to cover there, so we'll be efficient here. All right. Okay. Just, so all of just to be clear, are you going to, are you um, removing that objection? I'll re remove that objection. I'll readdress that particular line item uh, when we get to the next section here. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, paragraph four, section four here, I have a, a long list of uh, uh, signatures that I'm objecting to. I don't believe the signer is a proper person and it's not a genuine signature. So with that being said, I'd like to move on to item four. Uh, paragraph four, item A, a Leah Grover. I have a certified copy of the public record. I'd like to submit to the court. a suggestion I wonder if you're about to make the same one I am but go ahead <laughs> okay um, here's my suggestion we've got a lot of lines here and Miss writings I respect your um, choice to say you want it all in before you want to proceed but it seems to me that each one of these lines could be dealt with pretty quickly by doing exactly what this board has been doing and not having to come back and then go okay let me look at this one again let me see what it is again um, and I can tell you in past experience with the boards, especially with signature comparisons, that's how it's been done because then you can look at it right then. The board can make a decision right then, okay, I think this is the same person or I do not think it is the same person and make a decision right on the spot and get through these much quicker than having to come back and then go through them again. And it provides you the ability at the time when that, when Mr. Johnson is presenting his case to have it fresh in your mind what his allegations are, and you don't have to then go think, what did Mr. Johnson say? I appreciate that concern, and I'm happy to proceed however mm -hmm. you wish for me to proceed. Yeah. My only concern is that according to the um, rules of procedure, yeah. the procedure is that the objector has the burden going forward and should have evidence to present for each allegation, and I have a right to cross-examine or upon uh, the board deciding that he's met his burden, then I have an opportunity. Right. And I intend at the close of his case to make motions as to a um, directory finding right. that he has not met his burden. And my concern is that I'm going to assist him in meeting his burden if we go through these individually. I have no problem with the board reviewing 
the signatures for each of these um, voters on its own, I think it's clear from its face. Um, but that's my, if, you, if I'm not gonna be precluded from making those motions, I don't necessarily object to proceeding the way you did. I just don't wanna waive any right for my client. Right, I, I don't think you're precluded from doing anything at the end of Mr. Johnson's case at all. Not at all, no, I yeah. right. agreeable, agreeable. I, I might also, uh, just for at first preliminary discussion among the, the three of us, um, for the sake uh, of time, does it make sense? Mr. Johnson has submitted a total of 45 um, objections. Um, there's gonna come a point where, uh, there may come a point where we know that she's, uh, that it's the objection in entirety appears to be sustained or perhaps not. Does it make sense at that point to, to stop qualifying signatures? You know what I mean? If uh, we've hit a mathematical limit where, where, the, where the outcome is. Still is still eligible. Right. right. Uh, I agree with that. Does that yes, make sense to you? Mr. Vinton, any thoughts no, or that's, concerns? No, that's on correct. That? And I don't, I don't remember in the petition whether it says how many total signatures there were. Good. That does, yeah, 79 signatures. 79? Correct. So in order to, so, and you need, and I think we would 50. all agree need 50 signatures. Right. Mm -hmm. So you would need to knock out then 20, 30? Yeah, no. 30. Yeah, 30. You would need to knock out 30 signatures right. to get it down to 49, okay. and then that would disqualify the candidate. If you can't get 30 signatures knocked out, then it, yeah. I then agree. Candidates. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Ridings, that may even shorten it up, too, because if Mr. Johnson can't meet his burden on the first 30 that he wants to object to, then, um, yeah. I appreciate those concerns. Right. Yeah. And, and again, it wouldn't preclude you from responding after right. the, that determination, either. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Um, lost my page. So, uh, uh, amongst us, do we want to keep score of who we think is going on? Yes, yeah. To that end, if I could interject again, Certainly. if we're going to be doing them individually, um, as part of our case, we have a packet of affidavits mm -hmm. as to several of the same individuals. If it would be helpful, I can present these now. I won't um, move them to be admitted until it's our case, but um, the affidavits will contradict individual um, allegations. Uh, that would be expedient. Yeah. Do you have any objection, sir? Um, yeah, I didn't really uh, understand. I said that would be expedient. Do you have any objections to that, sir? I, I didn't quite understand this, uh, this statement. Uh, she says that she has a packet of affidavits that uh, rebut your allegations as we're going one by one through the signatures. And do you have any objection to her presenting those now so that we consider them as we go along? Are these affidavits for actual signers? Well, Is that what I'm they understanding? Are. Did They're you want to show them to uh, Mr. Johnson? Yes, please. I'm happy to do that. Obviously, this will take some time to go through. So what, what best serves well, the court? I think if you take an uh, overall look at it and see if you have any initial objections to them uh, or to her presenting them um, in a packet, and then as we go through individually, I believe you'll have an opportunity to. Uh, so you would use this in, in conjunction with reviewing the other certified copies? That I, I, right. I, You're right. I we may. Right. And so, then uh, let's see, do, do, they, do they cover several signatures each affidavit or is each affidavit pertain to one specific signature in other words could you just say we're on john smith here's an affidavit ref refuting that the um affidavits are either for um the allegation in paragraph four and in three and in five and so the um, affidavits they also support the first three candidates um, on the docket just so that you're aware of that. And so there might be one affidavit as to the proper signature, another affidavit as to a proper address, but they're all um, in a single document, and I have that Bates numbered with a table of contents so that you can easily find each 
each one. So maybe, uh, you know, perhaps, especially in the in this <laughs> section four, where the question is whether or not they're valid signatures, if we examine the signatures and we believe that uh, the <coughs> objection is sustainable, if there is a, an affidavit that addresses that, then perhaps we go there for that affidavit. Does that make sense as a meaningful way to proceed? That would be acceptable to the candidate. I think I have a foundational issue with this because the signatures that I verified against are the actual published records that are, are with the county clerk as a certified copy, mm -hmm. um, which may not reflect what they have here. So my, my whole case is based on verifying the signature that's on the petitions to what's the public record that's on the county clerk's website. Does that make sense? It, it does. If I haven't then seen maybe the, if we could uh, uh, examine the affidavits right. and see whether what or not they're that attesting would be, to. Yeah. yeah. The originals are in the envelope, and then there's two extra copies. That could be it, if I may, if, if I may, you, um, the burden of proof in cases like this is on the objector. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, Mr. Johnson, if you present like your objection to Leah Grover and this board looks at the signature of Leah Grover on the nominating petition and the signature on the registration card and they say, yeah, it doesn't look the same, then, it, then Ms. Ridings would say, well, here's my affidavit from Ms. Grover saying that that is my signature. But let's say this board says, yeah, I'm looking at those signatures and yeah, they're the same, that's the same person. You haven't met your burden of proof at that point. Ms. Ridings could still submit her affidavit, but I think the board at that point would say, we're going to overrule your objection on that line. So may I ask the, uh, the clerk a question that's uh, particular to the signatures themselves. So when you record a signature at the clerk's office, is that taken from the driver's license? Is that an image of the driver's license signature? Uh, I object is that collected? to the yeah. objector S asking. Sustained. Yeah. Sustained. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, it appears that some of these, the, from the cursory uh, uh, examination, uh, are from the actual uh, signatory themselves. Indeed. Right. So um, I think this would be a, I think this would be an expedient way to proceed. That we go step by step. Okay, so when you say expedient, is this going to be reviewed in front of us here now? I, it, yes. As you go, yeah. and then we'll look at the we'll look at the signature, we'll look at the affidavit, and then we'll consider that whether or not uh, you've met your burden at that. So point. then, will you go ahead and initiate line by line on my behalf? Then is that what I'm understanding? And, I th and is, do you have them in that order also? I, I don't have them in the order um, that Mr. Johnson does. You have your table of contents. Where However, we could easily the table of contents should. We could, yeah, okay, yeah. All right. All right. Well, it's, so, uh, uh, for instance, which one? Well, for instance, we were looking first at uh, Ms. Leah Grover. Mm -hmm. We took a look at her um, signature, <coughs> and then um, since you're since you're most familiar with uh, with uh, the affidavits. When we get to a candidate that you have something that you, an affidavit that directly refutes his uh, uh, testimony or his evidence, um, will you let us know? Like for instance, on this one, it doesn't appear that you have. I don't have an affidavit as to Ms. Grover because I, I think the certified record is sufficient. Right. Okay. So then maybe we'll go mm -hmm. as, as that. What, when he comes up with it, then we'll ask you whether or not you have an affidavit. Right, if we them. need that yeah. affidavit Understood. to right. Thank you. settle. Is that agreeable to everybody? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is, and then this is her certified signature. Yeah. I see. It's so, identical. Yeah. Do you want to vote as we go? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to say plus or minus? Um, Mr. Cato, you, you, you guys, if you could speak up because it is, you, oh, I think, yeah. It's, right, right, right. yeah. So, yeah. all right. I think uh, the question is what, um, I think we're going to proceed step by step and then uh, we'll either say that we believe it's genuine or it's not. Or it's not. In okay. which case, we'll ask you if it's not, to, if you have an affidavit to uh, support that. And then, and then to the previous point, if we get to the point where you cannot prevail, 
of the number, then we'll move on to the next. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. All right. So on this first one, um, uh, I say genuine. And I say genuine. And I agree, it looks genuine. So that's for Grover. Yeah. And then, um, are we going to go uh, on our previous ones, on our plus and minuses on that, on those previous guys as well? Yeah. Yes, let's. All right. Uh, we're going to go back uh, and begin uh, on paragraph two, line A, Anthony uh, Allard. Right. Right. And so in that case, we're looking at um, whether or not the signer was registered. Right. And it, and it was our understanding that um, we did not find any records for these people. Um, would you agree then that they are not uh, there, that that uh, objection is sustained for these four? Yes, I would agree. And then you would have an opportunity in your case to refute that if you have any evidence. Thank you. Yeah. Understood. So on the first, so just so we're clear on 2A, 2A we're, we're saying that the objection is sustained in those four. On the, uh, so we got A, B, C, D, so those four are, are sustained. Right. Those are sustained. The objection is sustained. And then we move on to paragraph three. Sign or not in district, um, uh, uh, 3A, her name is not actually uh, Lauren Dowder as the petition, as the objection says. But what do we have, the, the actual name? Yeah, the well, it was Dorf. Yeah. yeah, so I, my feeling on that one was that a, obviously the Objection was for uh, Lauren Dowder, but even if we know that it's Lauren Dorfler, it appears that she's in the uh, in the district, as was the case with Jennifer Knight. Except that uh, let's look at that petition again, though. Do we have? Uh, yeah. Because my, my here we are. Is this it? Um, five. I think so. Yeah, five. Here it is. Four right here, was actually supposed to be six four. Is this yeah. Right yeah. Okay, and then uh, based on that, um, on the petition, Carrie has one, two, three, four uh, letters, and the town that uh, the signer uh, wrote in under the city, town, or village column seems to have an excess of uh, uh, four letters, and it's more like about 12. So based on that, I would sustain that. The objection? Yeah. See I would, I would not, because the, the evidence that we're now saying that this is Lauren Dorfler, that this is the, the <laughs> genuine person, and that person lives in the district. Yeah, right. uh, but the objection is that she, the signer is not in district, and I believe right. she does live in the district. Right. Not whether no or not the petition was filled there, out correctly. Yeah, right, yes, I'm with, okay, I'm with you on that. I agree with that then, yeah. I'll, okay. Okay, yeah. All right, so not so, sustained. So not that. sustained. Right. Uh, D O R F L E R. I object. On what basis? Just based on uh, inconclusive. I, I I still hold that that line item is illegible. Um, the record you may uphold for uh, Lauren Dorfler may not be the same individual. You gave us this. I did, and that was furnished by the clerk's office. But that's based on the line item that I highlighted and they use the, the inaccurate information off of that line item. And sir, um, uh, my concern was the same as, as, as far as that went, but as the, uh, my fellow board members pointed out, your objection is that, they're not, that the signer is uh, uh, not in district. Mm -hmm. And so based on the evidence you provided. You, you, don't have, you, don't have, you don't have evidence that a Lauren Dowder doesn't live in district. The, evidence that we printed for you on, on your request that you brought to us today mm -hmm. is for Lauren Dorfler. If you didn't feel like that was the right person, then you wouldn't have to present it to us. Mm. But given if this is the real person that signed that petition, 
if that's what your argument is making, she lives in the district. Okay, and is that based on, uh, you know, I guess I referred to this? objecting to the conversation the objector is trying to have with the board. The board has made its statement, and I, I don't believe the conversation is appropriate. If he has a specific objection or a specific piece of evidence he wants to put in, that would be fine, but I, I would object to him just asking the board questions. Uh, I would overrule that based on it's he's yeah. argument. Yeah, I agree. Right, I right. Agree. And, and, um, really, the only thing that's at all clear on her particular line item is perhaps the street number and perhaps the street name, but anything else on that line item is illegible. But, but that's not what you're board, arguing here. Right, I think the board has concluded that your argument is that the signer is not in district right. where your objection and, is. And but. that address may be in a different town, on a, in a different county. So uh, I'm referring to that street address as being uh, the only point of indication that the, that you're pulling that record, that record that it provided is based on that street address alone. Okay, so you provided this to us as evidence. I did. And we consider this as evidence. She's in the, in the district. Okay. So, I, uh, do you guys have any ad objection to, to that line of thought? Um, given this particular argument? No, I'm persuaded. Okay. So, uh, Doubter slash Dorfler is not sustained. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Knight. That one was withdrawn. That objection was withdrawn. Right. So that will give that another not sustained or right. withdrawn. So, yeah. Okay. And then Leah Grover. Um, we, sorry, uh, should we keep a record as we go? Uh, at, at what we have so so far. So far we have one, two, three, four sustained. And, and well, that and don't forget that's that's until Miss Ridings gets to present her case on those four. Right. Yeah. And, but right. if we get to the number where he can't prevail. Right. Yeah, okay. that's just, what yeah. I'm trying to determine. Okay. Right, so we've got four, so, six, seven, if we count Leah Grover as a settled matter. Do we want to delegate that duty to anybody to keep the tally? Well, I'm keeping track. I am keeping a number of how many you are sustaining Thank you. as we go. Thanks. Are you also keeping the numbers that are not sustained? Yes, by okay. deduction. I'm just yeah. curious what, uh, what, what you have as a tally so far. I have four, but they're tentative to Ms. Ridings presenting her case on your items in paragraph two. Right. Right. Those were the ones that you sign are not registered. So those are sustained. The other ones you're referring to are not sustained, meaning that they're being yeah, allowed. So they're being allowed. Okay. Right. Thank you. And, so, and we had 40. And of those, I'm sorry, once again, how many of those do you have allowed so far? I don't know. I'm keeping a track of those that uh, are, are have, knocked out. Yeah, with a two. Or with so, so, uh, so paragraph three. two, we have four that we agree with your objection. Correct. Right. Okay. Paragraph three, we do not believe we, those are not sustained. Your okay. objection is not I, sustained in that. Okay. In I, I have two so far, and I'm just trying to make sure we're on the same. And that, that's there. and I know we did go back. We backtracked a little okay. bit. Right. And then I believe on four A, we also said not sustained. Right. Yeah. So okay. right now we have uh, from my tally we have four sustained and three not sustained we have three right? yes we have the two in paragraph three and also the first one in paragraph four so it's okay. four a okay thank you thank you okay right, here we go next up is stephen norwood he is sheet one line do we have uh, a certified copy? Oh, yes. Sorry. There you go. And then, Mr. Johnson, as we go down the list, this is how we'll proceed. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay. So we're talking about the one just below the line here. Oh, below your line. Yeah. Oh. Below the paper, oh. rather. How is that as? Yeah. Same as. Yeah. That's the same. Is this discussion that you're having on the record or not? Because 
I can't hear you, so if it's not... It, 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 it is on the record. Right. Yeah, so we'll, the record. we'll speak up. We'll speak yeah, up sorry. as we're deliberating. Right. But uh, in my in my mind, that the S's do look uh, distinctively uh, similar, uh, so I would say that that's a genuine signature. I agree. I would also agree. So in the item of Mr. Norwood, we would find that signature to be genuine. Yeah, and so are we going to use the term not, not, term not sustained? Sure. Okay. Not sustained. So now we're 4-4. Four, four. Got it. Pills. You're at Pills. Cynthia Pills. I'd like to submit uh, certification for her. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. And Thank you. She is line three on the same page, just below my sheet there. Oh, that's the same to me. Uh, that looks the same to me. You agree? I'm going to. The three I, of us. Yes, I also agree. I'm going to uh, say not speak, speak a little louder so that the court reporter can hear us. Yes. It's not that I'm yelling at you guys next to me. <laughs> Uh, next would be Laura Ristow, sheet one, line four. There you go. I could give you this packet because they're all, they all. Yeah, yeah I'm line. thinking that was a good, yeah, that'd be a good idea. That to, would that be okay? Chris? I'd like to submit this as evidence for the for and we'll all just the signatures. Go. Any objection from the candidate? I don't have any objection. Thank okay. you. Okay. This clears yeah. my desktop. Too, right. So and sure. Thank you. Thank you. So they are paginated up in the top right corner of each page. Thank you. Okay, great. Set the and they're in order. order. Correct. Terrific. Ter All right. Thank you. So we have Laura Ristow, who is line Saint line four, page one. So just beneath the page there. Uh, what is oh, that's the one there? Yeah, four. Uh, it's the very last, similar. Yeah, the last the the last name is definitely uh, very similar to uh, yeah. our exemplar. And the middle initial. Yeah, yeah I think it might have just been a so dry start say, on the pen. So on this one, I would, uh, instead of saying we think it's general, well, we'll say it's general, and then we'll say uh, not, not sustained. sustained. Yes, agreed. Agreed. And uh, once again, the number um, is 15 that of non-sustained. Uh, what's the number we're looking for? Um, 30, 30, 30, 40. We have to... Well, in other words, how many not sustained before he cannot prevail? 30. Yeah. You need 30. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I believe we have one, two, three, four, five. Six not sustained and four sustained. I agree. Right. right. Yeah. Thank you. Next is David Matashed, sheet one, line five. I think that, that looks, matches. That yeah. looks genuine to me, so I would vote not sustained. Not sustained. Not sustained. Okay. Next is Naomi Ruth, uh, sheet one, line 10. There. I would vote genuine and I would vote not sustained. Yeah, especially the first name is pretty obvious. I agree, not sustained. Yeah. All right, next is sheet two. Line four, Matthew Pills. Just below the page there. That one I'm not as convinced about, really. 
first name is quite a bit different, the last name is quite a bit different. Well, I'd say the M is similar. Um, uh, the exemplar has uh, the shortened version, Matt, and the signature on the petition is Matthew. Uh, the M is similar. Uh, the Z at the last name Doesn't really does not really exist. correspond. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, is there any other? No, that's I, I, I feel like it's perhaps not genuine. Yeah, at this point, I'm going to uh, sustain that one, not genuine. Agreed, sustain. I will also sustain it. It doesn't match. We have an affidavit in support of that line entry. Um, do, do we want to, well, let's, let's yeah. do you want to Is, do that now? I think we'll do that now. Yes, yes please. Let's, let's yes. request it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And where uh, do you want to put your package of affid affidavits over here, and you can bring it to our attention it's when right we here. get there? We got them. I think we yeah. do. Oh, we got them. Yeah, yes. we got yes. them. Okay. Good. Is there a page that you can direct I can. us to? It is number two on the table of contents, pages oh, okay. three to four. Got and it. And I've uh, given the original clerk the original. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we also have to consider that there's probably some passage of time between. Yeah, it could be. So right. we're going to uh, page three and four. Joe? Yeah, well, this is the. No, on, is the on her affidavits. Oh, it's the yeah, same it's the one? Same yeah, thing. Okay. yeah. This is just oh, are you giving reason. us individual ones as we go as well? You have the packet yeah, in we'll, front of you, but we'll, then we have originals that oh, we can tender as. Uh, uh, I'll accept the, pack, the packet as the okay, originals. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'll just refer to them then. Yeah. And that'll save a, our assistant right some steps. <laughs> right. Uh, why don't we take the originals and you keep the copies? Well, yeah. You have a packet with these copies. Right. Yeah. She has the originals. Right. I think we should probably have, have the originals. The original. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay, these are the rest of the originals. And this was one of the originals. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's keep these with our trade that. stuff. We'll right. trade you back that one. All right, and then... Uh, that would be easy to put in the side. So this is Matthew Pills. So this is uh, what's been provided to us as an affidavit stating that he lives uh, at 950 Milford Street in Cary, that he reviewed the petition, that he the signature on page 2, line 4, is a genuine signature, and he's stating that he personally signed the petition to place Deanna D. Darling on the ballot, et cetera. And he's also attached a, as an exhibit a drive, his driver's license. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, that signature, in my mind, matches. So I would I would say, uh, based on of the rebuttal, that it is a genuine signature, and I would not sustain that. Agreed. Um, does the candidate, can, can we have the, uh, this this packet is not, does not have a table of contents? With that it? packet yeah. does not, I didn't want to make any markings on the originals. Got it, got it. But, but are they in the same order as the table of contents? They, they are not. Okay, all right, so we'll just page through them and find them. There's not that many. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, so. So I, we, I, uh, Matthew Pills were saying based on the uh, rebuttal that not uh, it is not sustained. Um, next is Deanna Darling, page two, line seven. Here is her. It's yeah. right below mine. Yeah. Uh, I would say genuine and, and say that the objection is not sustained. Agreed. Agreed. Can I interrupt the board for just a moment? Certainly. Because here, if I'm doing my math right, here's what I have. Um, there were 79 total signatures. 50 valid signatures were needed, mm -hmm. which meant that 40 needed to get knocked out in order to bring it below the number of 50 valid signatures. There were 45 total objections. And at this point, by my math, the board has not sustained 10 of those object objections, 
which would bring you down to 35 objections left. And even if all 35 were sustained, right. you still would not bring this number below 50. Right, that was right. the number I was trying to get at yeah. earlier. Right. So, he's, uh, so the candidate uh, has reached the uh, point where the objector cannot prevail. Right, actually is five below as far as I can, my, we, yeah, you're, yeah, right. you're below, even if every one of your objections from here on out were sustained, you are still below the number you would need to knock out in order to sustain your entire objection to Miss Darling's candidacy. Wouldn't he need to knock out 30, not 40? No, there's a total of... Um, well, 79. So Illinois. with my objections, I, I reduced her number of unobjected uh, signatures to 34, as I previously stated, and right now we have uh, 10 that... You are correct. It, no, wait, hold it, Mr. Johnson. You're right. It is, it is 30 that need to get knocked out. Yeah, so you are 30 correct. objections that need to be right. knocked yeah. so we're not right. there. Then. Not right, there. Not there. okay, right. 30 that need to get knocked right. out. Right. So actually, we, you, the number, the magic number here is really, to be safe, 20 need, 20 of these objections need to be not sustained. In order I for I just the, say safe so that there's, there, there, you know, so you've got some little margin of mathematical error there. Does that make sense? Well. Could I interject just for yes. the record? Yes. Um, in the objection itself, Mr. Johnson, in paragraph six, um, says that he has made objections to 45. Right. Um, but three of the names in the objection were in different two different paragraphs, and we don't count those people twice. Right. So there's really only um, th 40. 43. 42. 42. I'm sorry, 42. 42. Um, and when he says or to 34, it would be a 37. Or he says or 16, it would be 13. Because three people, Laura Dowder, Jennifer Knight, and that's it. were, were counted um, in separate paragraphs. More so in other words, the total pool of objections is 43 correct. different. That's correct. 42. No, 42. 42. 42. 42. 42 signatures yes. 42 that are being objected, objected to. to. 42. 45 different objections. Right. Out of 42 That's signatures. correct. Right. Jennifer right. Knight was counted three times as three people, and Laura Dorfer was counted as two people. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the thing I'm thinking. They're, right. They, yeah, they're so, separate objections. So if, if she, if, let's take uh, Ms. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dorfler, Doubter. Um, she's uh, been she's been um, um, that, yeah. been found to be in district in item three, which means that she would survive to be asked the question wherever she is. If she's uh, seems like I saw her on another one of the lists. Right, and I would I would say that it's the number of objections mm -hmm. rather than the no yeah. the number of individuals. I wanted to just make that clear. Right. No, yeah. but I'm, thank you. <laughs> and so, what's our agreement on what number is the magic number uh, once the uh, objections are not sustained? How many not sustained do we get to the breaking point where he cannot prevail? What's the agreement on that? We need 13 signatures. We need 13 that have not been sustained in order to meet our 50. That's Right. Is that is that are you in agreement with that, sir, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we're saying. We get to 13 not sustained. We can move on to the next object, next petition, right? Yes. Okay. All right. And right now, where are we at? You're at 10 right now, by my math. Right. Yeah. I agree with your math. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it, was that with or without Deanna Darling? It was with. Okay. All right. Okay. So moving on now. Uh, once we get to 13, we'll move to the next. We'll allow Ms. Writings to have her uh, response. Well, I think at that point it'll be over because he won't be able to prevail. Okay, but she's. I agree with that. Yeah. Thank you. With what? Which with do you, what you said. What I say? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for your patience and, as well. And, and, and Mr. Johnson, just so you know, if um, if if all evidence isn't presented, it's not going to matter if somebody ends up filing an appeal to the circuit court on this because the circuit court looks at it all what's called de novo, brand new. 
they look at everything brand new. So you're not forfeiting any rights to present anything and you're not forfeiting any rights to defend anything. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So Candace Forgath, sheet three, line two. And also the, um, in my opinion, the last uh, letters in the signature match the exemplar by the, a, a very distinctive swirl. And yeah, curl yeah. and I think the first letter <coughs> flourish actually kind of goes up in the first line yeah. a little so bit. So I would uh, say that signature is genuine and I would not sustain the objection. Agreed. Agreed. I don't agree, but. Okay, next is Douglas Phelps. And Douglas is on sheet three, line four. I see the uh, the same D on that one. I think the the slope of the handwriting is a little different, but uh, I would say that's genuine, and therefore I would not sustain the objection. And I'm a bit mixed on it, Ms. Writings. Do you have an affidavit for Mr. Phelps? I do not have an affidavit for Mr. Phelps. I think it's different enough to have questions, so yeah, I would sustain too. the objection. I would too. So that's two to one in that particular case, so we'll find that one to be sustained. Uh, Sylvia Phelps, sheet three, line five. Name. Well, the P and the H look alike. alike. How's that S look? Um, um, it's kind of a... I'm not seeing it myself. The S is not consistent. No, in my mind. No. And how about the S's at the end of the name? Are there two S's on the end of the, on the exemplar? Are these two it, S's here? It looks like a P and an S. Okay, yeah, a that's a P and an S. Yeah, and then that. what do we got on that one? It's just, I don't know. Uh, and rather short um, extension of the H following the P uh, in the in the uh, yeah. Uh, do you have an F. affidavit for Ms. I Phelps? Do not. Uh, that one I would I would I would say not genuine, and I would sustain the objection. Right. Agreed. Agreed. You also agree. Do you mind me speaking first like that, or am I stepping no. on the No. Oh, toes? you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Next is Christian Noonan, line, uh, sorry, sheet three, line nine. Uh, can you make out the N on the petition? Uh, I'm asking my fellow board members here on this. Once we go to these, this point, unless we're addressing it directly, we're um, talking amongst ourselves. Deliberating. Yeah. Um, and but you have to do it loud enough so that it's on the record. Right. The the first name is similar. Yes. This last name on the petition is almost. Yeah. It's very not, different. Not there. Or yeah. Not there, right? well, it I, starts out and kind of just stops. Yeah. And then we also have to consider, you know, where these signatures are being signed and if there's any support. Well, there should be a board underneath there, but uh, how about, I can't even make out the, uh, the N and the last name on the petition. I can't make anything beyond the second letter, the O and 
the yeah. first O in there. And the there. last the last letter, the A, looks yeah. similar except that uh, in the exemplar, the A stands alone and is not connected, whereas in the uh, yeah. in the on the petition, the A is one part uh, of the previous letter. So uh, I would say not genuine and sustain the objection. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Next, we have Deborah Coloda, sheet three, line 10. Uh, I don't see a uh, distinguishable last letter uh, A on the petition, and it almost even looks like a, 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 an N compared to the A in the exemplar. So I would say not genuine, and I would sustain the objection. Yeah, I'm. I. Uh, it's 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 definitely different. I think it starts out the same. The yeah. D, the, the D is is pretty her close. D and her K, I think, is yeah. pretty close. Yeah. It doesn't have as big of a loop, but yeah. And I mean, I you're signing in different places. Right. Right. Now, how will, and she also the B at the uh, at the end mm -hmm. of the first name, and we have uh, Deb yeah, versus Debra, so correct. maybe the B would not continue on the way she does it in, the, in the exemplar. She makes it into like a right. Uh, uh, an O and continues on to the next letter. So uh, how about that K? Well, that K, the K is very similar. Yeah, K is almost dead on. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you folks have an affidavit for Miss Coloda? We do not. Col Coloda. Okay. <sighs> this is a close tight. one. Yeah. I, I would have to, I would have to go towards sustaining, uh, sustaining the. Uh, I'm sorry, not sustaining the objection, sustaining the fact that it is a genuine signature, um, just on the basis that uh, if we're trying to establish if it's the actual person, uh, I feel like it's the same person writing it. Well, let's see. Uh, now, the other thing is, in the box, uh, voter's printed name, uh, right following the... Uh, the signature column, uh, the T, she actually kind of wrote that out too. And that, uh, she's got a distinctive um, T in her last name preceding the A, and the T and the A do not correspond in my mind to the exemplar. So I would vote to, to say that the signature is not genuine and sustain the objection. And I'm uh, I'm on the other side of that. So Robin, you're the decision maker on this one. Um, I'm on the other side of it. I think we have to take into consideration when you sign your voter's card or wherever that signature is coming from. You're taking your time and signing your name. And when you're signing these petitions, it's you may be holding a clipboard or you're on the move. Um, so I would um, believe that is a genuine signature. Okay. So it's not sustained. It's not sustained. And that brings us to how many not sustained. Well. Well, you're doing a good job, Joe, keeping this organized. Thanks. Next up is sheet four, line five, Amanda Rainey. Line five. I'm sorry. Sheet four, line five, Amanda Rainey. Six. Oh, there, oh. Yeah. oh, it's just oh. Line six. It's line six. Right. Okay, line so there's six. a Sorry. Uh, Scrivener's oh, okay. error here. All right. Amanda Rainey. Uh, in this case, the petition uh, is more or less like a uh, smear type signature, for lack of a better description. And the um, the uh, signature in the exemplar is very definitive. So yeah. I would say not genuine, and I would sustain the objection. Right. Agreed. I agree. 
Is there an affidavit on that? We do not have okay. an affidavit right. for it. And then uh, I think the, the point is when we get to the, when we say they're not sustained, then we won't have a need to have the affidavit. So in other words, right. once we vote right. that we sustain it, then we'll look to the affidavit. Right. Okay. Is that, okay. Agreed. Agreed. Um, sheet five, line two. Is a Leonard Lund. Um, All right, am I? Uh, in this case, it's the exact opposite of my analysis of the last signature. In this case, it looks like the the signature on the petition is a lot more definitive than the signature on the exemplar, and therefore, I would say. Uh, not genuine, and I would sustain the objection. Agreed? Agreed. Next is sheet five, line three. And uh, now we're at. Well, did you, I, I, I'm going to have to back up and ask you, on that Amanda Rainey, did you sustain that objection? Sustain that one. And that would have. Okay, and then you sustain the last one. Okay, yep. okay, you're at 12. So now we're on to sheet five, line three. And this person is Robert Janzak. And for everybody else, we're on uh, page three of nine of the ob uh, objection petition, and we're on letter P of uh, paragraph four. Five line three. One, two, three. No printed name on this one. It again just doesn't look anything. Uh, you can almost argue the R is the same, but the rest of it is just the, the K, the last the last letter in the signed name is similar to the to the uh, exemplar. Uh, but none of the other uh, letters match the exemplar, so I would vote not genuine and sustain the objection. Agreed. 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 There's an case, affidavit. We have an affidavit, so that's that's how we'll proceed. Once once we sustain it, if you have an affidavit to refute it, then we'll uh, entertain that. That affidavit is on Should page I? one. I better leave these to you, Joseph. Of right. the packet, and is supported by a. Uh, driver's license. All right, let's see. Um, you know what? I wonder if it would benefit us to give this packet back to you so that you could put it into the order of your table of contents, and then you give us the table of contents, and we might be able to well, find it a little quicker. Uh, I think we're good because we're almost on the, uh, yeah. we're almost at the not sustained. Uh, Here we go. Robert Jansack. So Robert has attested in his affidavit that he leaves it, lives at 3006 Grove. The signature is on sheet five, three, and that it's his genuine signature. And up oh, there it is. There's yeah. his uh, driver's license. And where are we back on this guy again? Uh, three. Right above. Right, right yeah. there. There you go. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, hmm. so given the affidavit, I would say that we would have to. Um, I would vote that that genuine. was genuine and not sustain the objection. Which brings us to? Brings you to 13, but I would recommend to the board to go at least, if you're going to, to continue on at least a couple of more, if you do not sustain or you overrule the objections, at least two more just for some room for error there, math, mathematical error. Everybody agreeable? Okay. That's um, next up, we have Pamela Baker. Did I get another Peter Montblanc? Maybe, maybe out of order. 
Camel of Baker, who is sheep five, line five. What was I going to That's that one. Underneath uh, that line there. Yeah. Uh. To me, there's uh, significant uh, differences between the signature on the petition and the signature on the exemplar, specifically the um, uh, unique B and the last name. And the P's. Uh, they, they differ. So based on that, I would say not genuine and uh, sustain the objection. Do you have an affidavit for Ms. Baker? We do. We do. It is line seven on the table of contents, For pages 17 to oh, 19. Yeah. How about that? Okay. So Ms. Baker uh, swears to the fact that she lives at 3110 Grove Lane and Cary, that she was a signature on sheet five, line five. Um, so based on that, I would say genuine signature yeah. and uh, not sustain the objection. Agreed. Agreed. Next is Mary Mooney, sheet five, line six. Sheet five, line six. So this is an example where her reference signature is handwritten in cursive and the signature given was uh, a mix of cursive and uh, yeah, mostly print and print. partly cursive. So they really don't. And the M in the cursive last name on the petition does not have the what I would like a better. Yeah, the, uh, let's call that a flourish that to begin the M. Right. And um, the Y uh, also is different, as is. Yeah, so I would, uh, based on that, I would say um, not genuine and sustain the objection. Is, do we have an affidavit from Ms. Mooney? We do not have an affidavit from Ms. Mooney. Uh, next, sheet five, line 10, Laura Poteet. Based on the lack of the <laughs> flourish that is displayed on the exemplar at the end of the name uh, and uh, the absence of that on the signature on the petition, I would say not genuine and sustain the objection. Agreed. You? I would agree. Uh, do we have an Agreed. affidavit? We do. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Number 18. It's line 18 in the copies. Yes. Page is 59 to 62. Okay, I was looking at the page numbers at the bottom here. So, okay, 59. Did you find it? Yes. Oh. Great. I have the index. Right. Uh, oh. So Lauren Poteet swears that she lives on 530 South Prairie, that she is signature uh, on sheet five, page uh, line 10, and she provides her driver's license, which has become detached from her page in the originals, but you have it there. There's like a photocopy of it. Yeah. It is home. Yeah, which looks very much. So yeah, based on that, I would say genuine and uh, not sustain the objection. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. 
You are at 15. Is everybody satisfied that at this point the objector cannot prevail? I'd like to go to 16 because that was what the original objection was, just to prove our point for, six, for 16. Oh, I don't like well, I, <laughs> I think it uh, looks like we're already at an hour and a half on this okay. particular one. Yeah. So I think we've, uh, I, I, I think we've established that the objector at this point cannot prevail. And so, uh, and now Ms. Ridings, you'd have an opportunity to. That won't be necessary. I, I have just no wanted idea. to make sure she had the opportunity, and then uh, Mr. Johnson gets an opportunity at the end to make any statement. As you well, can do correct? closing arguments. I mean, you 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 have that right to do, but you have that right. Mr. Johnson, anything that you. Um. And then again, if it were, if it were to be rev reviewed in a court of law, it would be de novo starting from the beginning. So it would not necessarily have anything to do with our decisions and our records here. You know, based on the evidence I was given here today and, and this not being uh, part of my initial investigation, um, based on the signatures that are provided through the county's documentation versus the line items here, um, I, I, you know, we're in a numbers game here, right? Um, so we have to verify, you know, play one against the other and see exactly what how the numbers shake out here. Uh, I, I will concede. I mean, we don't have the the less than fifty number that we're looking for, um, but uh, um, yeah, we'll just we'll concede the case and uh, move forward. Um, Thank you, sir. And then also, uh, based on our agreement that we got to that, that we're that uh, if you, if we if we got to a number of uh, not sustained objections where you would not be able to prevail from that point on, uh, then uh, that particular objection would be com uh, concluded. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, for the uh, purpose of the record, um, in the case of our findings yeah of uh, Johnson versus darling um, I vote that his suspension that his um, objection is is not sustained Mr. and then pursuant to the our, our um, uh, directive in the findings uh, we would state in writing that the candidate's name uh, shall be printed upon the ballot you also agree with I agree all right, and and we need to set a date for to come back to issue that written opinion on this because yes. because that's what triggers the appeal time. Right, right, yeah. and isn't that within so many days of the of today? I don't think there is a deadline on that. I, I'm not sure there's a deadline. It has that it, the call has to be within five days of complaints, objections being filed. But as far as issuing that written opinion, I don't think there's a deadline for that. We'd okay. usually try to make it the following week. Right. Yes, and um, I don't think it would necessarily uh, be a lengthy finding. So um, I, I would vote that we go uh, as short as date as possible. Well, you're not the one writing the oh, opinions. Yeah, right. yeah. And there are eight of them, so you can right. vote that all you want. I'm going to weigh in. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, good try there, KL. All right. <laughs> so, Mr. Vinton. I, I, um, how about, like, um, what about next Thursday or Friday? And that's, yeah, Thursday or Friday? And that's I, still within five business yeah, days. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, that's all I'm I doing. cannot do Friday. Okay. Next then Thursday? either Thursday or Monday that, oh, Monday is Martin Luther King Day, so it would either be Thursday or that following Tuesday. And that's just to reconvene to issue that written opinion. You don't have to be here. If, if you're not here, it gets mailed to you. But that's really what triggers the next deadlines. Understood. For me, so Thursday is a bad day for me. How is So we're looking at then Tuesday the 17th? Yes. 
I'm fine with the 17th. How are you guys? Um, after 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock or later, I'm okay. So okay. I cannot do nine. Shall we say 10 on Tuesday the 17th? Works for me. So then we would simply adjourn until that Tuesday, January 17th at 10 a.m. That's correct. For this particular case? Yes. Yes. Yeah, for this case. Yes. yes. All right. We'll do. We'll... Okay. All right. Okay. So we will adjourn this case until Tuesday the 17th at 10 a.m. This paperwork off to you, Chris, just to give us some working room here. Thank, Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. So the next case then would be Bruce Johnson versus Catherine Potter. Ms. Potter, if you would Can we take a quick bathroom break. Do you want it everybody agreeable to take a quick uh, ten minutes? Meet back here at ten forty five? Okay, great. Good. Thank Sounds you. good. Thanks.
folks ready to proceed? Candidate is ready. Ready. Mr. Objector. Oh. Yes. Okay. Gretchen, are you ready? You guys are ready? I'm ready. Okay. So we're going to reconvene at uh, 1044 and begin with case uh, Bruce Johnson versus Catherine Potter. Um, Gretchen, would you please uh, swear in the uh, candidate and the objector, please? Yes. yes. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you may begin. Very good, thank you. Um, if I might suggest before we start, do we want to uh, determine the, the number of not sustains that uh, must be reached before the objector can operate? I address that in my opening statement here. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Bruce Johnson. I reside at 204 Country Commons Road in Trout Valley, Illinois. I am a registered voter at this address and reside within Cary School District 26. I'm a citizen desirous of seeing that the uh, laws governing the filing of nomination papers uh, for the Office of Members of the Board of Education for the Cary Community Consolidated School District Number 26 in the state of Illinois are properly complied with and that only qualified candidates and their names appear on the ballots as candidates for the said office. And therefore, I make the following objections to the nomination papers of Catherine Potter as candidate for a nomination to the Office of Member of Board of Education of Cary Community Consolidated School District 26 in the state of Illinois. Uh, the files, uh, and files the same herewith and states that the said nomination papers are insufficient in law. Objector states that the nomination papers here and contested consist of various sheets allegedly containing the valid and legal signatures of 79 individuals. Um, and I uh, would like to reduce the number of valid signatures by 31 or to 48 uh, uh, signatures or two below the statutory minimum of 50. So, so really that number is uh, 48 that we're starting with. And um, Ms. Writing, as before, do you just in general wish to address the, uh, as a whole, uh, at the end of the case? Well, it, in this case, I would make a preliminary, I have preliminary matters. I okay. have a motion to make for the board to accept its findings of fact in Ms. Uh, Candidate Darling's case and the findings it made as to specific names that are also contained in the objection against Ms. Potter's uh, candidacy. Um, I think in regards to uh, the specific objections that, that we might be able to accept those, but if if they differ, I, uh, I think so we'd the have signature to, examples. Would, this, would be the totally signature different. examples we'd have to look at again. There might be other <clears throat> cases Oh, uh, whether or not she, they're a resident. Uh, let's see what the objections are first. I, I'm, I'm amenable to referencing uh, yes. Ms. Darling's findings. Uh, Robin? Yes. Yes. So uh, we're amenable to that, and where it applies. Where it applies. Yes. Okay, so we're, uh, but I'm saying that, um, so if we look at the objections, uh, right, so paragraph the two, sign or not registered. Right. I think that would. Right. So, the, for example, the, 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 the Kerbisons, if I'm pronouncing that right, and the objection in paragraph two uh, in the current case items B and C, the same objection was made in the prior case, uh, paragraph two items C and D, uh, because we're not comparing signatures in that particular case is merely a question of whether or not they're in district or they're not. Um, and then, so let's, so the ones that we're saying that we, that will transfer over and we'll accept in this case are uh, just in paragraph two, sign or not registered, and paragraph three, sign or not in district, uh, if there's, and right. what you, oh, what are the individual, what, which, let's see, what were our I have those here, if that's easier for me yes, to just you. tell you. Yes, um, In 
paragraph three of the objection, line A, as to Lauren Dorfer. Right. Um, that the objection is signer not in district. That was a fact in candidate Darling's matter that the board found um, she was indeed a in district. And so we would ask that the uh, board find on a summary basis that that is a valid, uh, that objection is overruled. Uh, yeah, and so that we would say not sustained on not that sustained. one, and I, I would agree with that. that. I agree. Okay. And in paragraph four, um, several of the same in voters who the board deemed to be the actual signatures are also reiterated in candidate Potter's um, objection against against her candidacy. But that that's it, where I would those, differ. That's where I would differ as well, because those are different. We're looking at different, different pieces petitions. of paper, different instances of the signature. So we'll compare oh, those again. I understand. Thank you. Thank that you. Makes sense? And yes. so that all, makes sense. the only ones based on that motion that we're not going to sustain is paragraph 3A. Is that correct? That's the only one that was addressed, right? Right. Dorfer. If I can just say one more thing. Sure. The signatures, the, the rebuttal evidence is going to be the same evidence that you received in finding, concluding that that was a genuine signature. And I understand you, you need to go through it all again. but. I wanted to pros that uh, so, uh, so you're saying that you have in some of these cases these same affidavits that we looked at before yes. are found in the same package and would apply in these particular cases That's okay so we'll go through that process I and in this case do we have the originals here or because I said this one has a table of contents. We still have the originals and oh the, I see what you've done we, it's the same table so these are the same affidavits that we're presenting in support or in rebuttal to each objection All right, thank you thank you would it serve the code of the court if I issue these certified yes, yes. thank you mr. Johnson uh, documents that I obtained from the co uh, clerk's office thank you so they are once again number numbered up in the right top right thank corner. you thank you Chris thanks All right. And at this point, I might like to uh, comment and uh, uh, commend both sides on their civility and uh, decorum. And Mr. Cahill, you posed the question early on about how many yes. of these objections would need to be not sustained, I guess, in order to for the entire objection to fail. And I believe the number would be two, because that's the that's the, the right. that's the you know if, if every one of your objections were sustained it would bring it down to 48 valid signatures yeah, I'm aware and, of that. So two. and so right now we have one that's not sustained right right we agree with that I'm holding out <laughs> all right <laughs> that's what we do all right so shall we ready to proceed though. yes um, any other preliminary matters no. from either side not all right, thank you okay then shall we start with paragraph two mr. Johnson and we'll proceed in yes. the same manner as we did last time. Paragraph two, uh, sheet six, line seven. Yeah. Is that what we're looking for? Okay. And you're saying that for a, uh, Tommy John. Mr. John does not. Um, does not, not a registered have, voter. He's not a registered voter at the address uh, specified. And are you also making the statement that, as before, that you requested documents? I requested the, requested documents for uh, Mr. Found. John, and uh, no documents were were available through the. County Clerk's Office. And I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but go ahead. Kerbison, <laughs> uh, the Kerbison couple. Same thing. Same. Yes, is, correct. Nothing's changed from That's before. Correct. Right. Um, so they do not so live at that address those, or not registered at that address. Sorry. Those, so those three are sustained. Agreed. Yes, I agree. Full board people, okay, board members. Uh, yes. And so that leads us to sheet eight, line nine. Yes. Uh, so line nine, uh, so uh, line nine seems to indicate that there are three registered voters at 508 Crest. Um, well, the third signature that's on line nine. Um, there are only two registered voters at said address and I do have, I have submitted documentation for that, so. So it doesn't substantiate the third uh, signature for a registered voter at that address. And I don't have any idea what that person's name is. Uh, Correct. Ms. Riding, do you have any affidavit to 
the nature of sheet eight. I do nine. not because I don't understand what the objection is or to whom it's directed. <clears throat> so but what they're saying is that the that the signer of uh, not a registered voter at not that a registered address. voter. There's there's been no allegation as to who who that person is. <laughs> I think that might be part of the issue. That's part of the issue, correct. And, and, uh, he's, and then he's arguing that there's only two registered voters at that address. Mm -hmm. And do you have evidence of that? I believe it's in the packet there. I, I may have to, yeah. have to fumble for it, so bear with me for a minute. And then how do we? <laughs> Well, I, I, yeah, we I can't really exclude. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we wouldn't be able to pack it exactly. Well, actually, because it pertains to the other uh, case as well, so that's that's, that's great. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Um, in other words, how how would you prove that there was only two registered voters? Okay, at I the have address? that right here. So. And for the record, uh, on this petition, the voter's printed name, which is optional, that column is not filled in. So we're working with some uh, uh, vagaries. Yes. Yeah. And a little difficult to decipher the names. But we'll see what. So do you. Do you have anything, Mr. Johnson? I'm, I'm looking at, I'll find it after we're probably done. <laughs> All right, well, how about this? We'll go yes. on. I have, and then I have right. a log jam here in front of me, yeah. so sorry yeah. about that. Uh, uh, well, why don't we, um, <coughs> so that next. would be 2D, a 2D on the uh, registered voters at 508 Crest. <laughs> Uh, we will come back to that. We'll revisit that because yeah, I believe be uh, there's, a, there's only one other not sustained so that we'll move forward. And if we come right. up with another not dis, not okay. sustained, then we will not have to come back right. to this. So right. uh, we'll revisit this if that's agreeable to everybody. Uh, I agree. Uh, then the next item would be, excuse me, um, Paragraph three, item B, which is sheet seven, line nine. And then also for the record on that, uh, paragraph three A uh, from the previous uh, uh, case, um, uh, that transferred over uh, our evidence on that for us to find that it's not sustained. Right. So three A is not sustained, and we're now we're moving on to three B. Three B. The argument being that they are not in district. Sign or not in district. And that is 50. Looks, like Margaret. looks like Margaret's Margaret? tree. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Johnson, do you have anything that sustains the argument that 150 Margaret <clears throat> is not in district? It's uh, sheet seven. Let me look here. Line nine. I believe there's no record available for that address. Uh, I, well, I, this is another one that maybe we could revisit because I, if um, as, uh, the candidates council has indicated that some of these signatures in 4A might be similar. I would suggest that we proceed to 4A and. All right. I'm agreeable to that. I agree. So now we're on to 4A, Mr. Johnson. Which is Leah Grover. 
And the allegation on this one is the signer, not proper person, and not genuine. Right. So let us get to page one. Line one. I'm sorry, sheet two, line one. Sheet two, line one. I think that's a, that's a genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, comparing the exemplar signature to the signature on the petition, uh, they appear genuine. It appears genuine to me on the petition, and therefore I would not sustain the objection. Agreed. I agree. Agreed. Uh, at that point, I believe that you would not be able to prevail at right. this point. So, that's our right. finding. Uh, uh, this one would be that uh, the candidate, his name remains on the ballot. Do you agree, Robin? I agree. I agree. Are there closing arguments by either? Okay. None. Then it's a decision of the board that Ms. Potter's name stay on the petition. Uh, next up is uh, Bruce Johnson versus Jason Janzak. As soon as you're settled, Mr. Janzak, we'll have Gretchen administer the oath. Okay, thank you. I think Jensen. we should treat each one as an individual yeah, exactly. to start again. Thank you, Gretchen. Let me know when you're ready to be sworn, Mr. Right. Johnson. Give me just one second, please, sir. No. Okay. Right, we'll, we'll proceed with Mr. Johnson. He looks like he's ready. I need that one. Mr. Johnson, are you ready to be sworn? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Uh, if you're ready to begin, Mr. Johnson, you may. Good morning. Uh, my name is Bruce Johnson. I reside at 204 Country Commons Road in Trout Valley, Illinois. Uh, I am a registered voter at this address and reside within Cary School District Number 26. Um, a citizen desires to see that the, see to it that the laws governing the filing of nomination papers for the nomination of the Office of the Member of the Board of Education of Cary Community Consolidated School District Number 26 in the state of Illinois are properly complied with, and that only qualified candidates have their names appear on the ballot as candidates for the said office and therefore, um, I'm sorry, uh, therefore objector makes the following objections to the nomination papers of Jason Janzek as candidate for the nomination for the office of the member of the Board of Education of Curry Community Consolidated School District Number 26 in the state of Illinois. Um, uh, objector states that the nomination papers here consist uh, con Contested consists of various sheets allegedly containing the valid legal signatures of 86 individuals. Uh, the individual objection cited herein with specific, specificity <laughs> reduced the number of valid signatures by 43. Our, our to 43 or seven below the statutory minimum of 50 that the uh, candidates required to have. Does the candidate have an opening statement? The only preliminary matter we have is that um, Mr. Johnson's objection does the same double counting of Ms. Knight and uh, Laura Dowder, as it's put in here, two times. So that would uh, take the number of signatures that need to be uh, found not objection, not defective to five, not seven. I, I, I believe our uh, uh, finding 
was that the, it's the actual number of obje objections rather than the individual. Right. Yeah, so I, I think we're going to stick with that. It's the number of the objections rather than the individuals in the objections. Thank you. But noted that they're... Yes. They appear twice. And then um, do we have an agreement on the number of not sustained uh, that once it is reached uh, that the objector cannot prevail? I think that's... Our number is five. And Mr. Johnson? My number is seven. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, I think it's seven. Um, and for I think the, the difference is because of the duplication. Uh -huh, right. That, yeah. Okay, so that make, that accounts for it. So um, we'll proceed, and if, uh, I would suggest that when, when we reach seven, uh, if, we, if we do if reach, you reach seven. seven. Yes, if, if we, we do reach, reach seven. seven. Come on, you got to have No, I agree. Yeah. I agree, Mr. Johnson. So, um, but that's the number, the quote unquote magic number, uh, once that, uh, right. at that point, that the objective cannot pr prevail. So then, if we begin with uh, paragraph two, we also find some um, names we've seen before. Oh, yes. Mr. Johnson, uh, given that the question is whether or not these people are, are registered, are you? And, I'm sorry. Uh, candidate, are you agreeable to carrying forth uh, forward the decisions we made in the prior? We are. For the ones that have been tested already? We are. Okay. And we'll go th we'll go through them one at a time, but we'll just reference those those prior cases. So um, Jennifer Knight. Uh, what what paragraph are we We're in, in Joe? Paragraph two. Yes, yeah, so this uh, will be sign or not registered. Right. And, and then we're going to refer to the evidence that we took earlier yeah. and uh, the objection to the nomination papers of I mean, Deanna Darling. Right. The first case we heard this morning. Yeah, Deanna and the um, and Ms. Potter's case. And I okay. don't believe Ms. Knight came up in this context. Um, okay. Came up in this context before. So let's determine which ones we've, uh, out of paragraph two, uh, in the initial case, it appears that uh, 2A. Uh, let's work through them one, one by one, because okay. I think they're, they, they they're, appear they're in different, different contexts. Con yes. Yeah. yes. So, uh, Mr. Johnson, um, what, uh, what, what is your argument with Ms. Knight regarding her being registered or not registered? I just double check. Um, once again, may I submit the certified copies of Please. the records? Yeah, thanks. I think oh, yes, thank you. I think yep. that's a, the method we've arrived at. I'm trying to yeah. Chris, make sense thank of you. my piles here, so I'll give you a pile <laughs> to consider. <laughs> um, thank you, Chris. Okay, so where's my... All right, so let's see. Um, I am missing... Um, though I would note uh, that there are some names that appear in our initial case uh, of uh, Deanna Darling in paragraph 2A, sign or not registered, that also appear in the present case uh, in the nomination papers of uh, Jason Janzak. And I would suggest that we go through those and cross-reference those in paragraph 2 from the from uh, Deanna Darling's case uh, and, and uh, carry over the findings that we found in the initial case uh, to this case. So I yeah, don't disagree. The, the reason I'm, I'm wanting to go one by one is I think Jennifer Knight has come up in a different context. Um, right. But I think we could initially, uh, like for instance, um, Tommy John appears in paragraph two in both of these, and, and initially we sustained the objection on right. Tommy John. So I would I would move that we oh I wouldn't move I would suggest that we uh, I would suggest that we uh, sustain Tommy John in the present case. Right, and the Kerbison. And Kerbison, yeah. and are there any others? The two Kerbisons. Okay, so we got yeah, two. Anthony Ellard was in yes. uh, the Darling case. Okay, as well. All Let me right. Check and see what the disposition of that. Yeah, that was a that sustained. Was also sustained. Yep. So paragraph two in the initial case this morning, all of those were sustained. So in this case, this afternoon, uh, or not this afternoon, the present case, two um, C 
Tommy, John, uh, I say sustain. Right, agreed. Agreed. Uh, and then uh, 2D, Lucas Kerbison, sustain. Agreed. agreed. And then line 2E, Karen Kerbison, sustain. Agreed. Agreed. And then I think you also said that, Aunt, yeah, there we are. Uh, 2F, Anthony Allard, should will also be sustained. Agreed. I agree. All right, thank you, Mr. Johnson. You, you may proceed. Are, are we going on to the next one now? Well, so we're right down the line. We've, we've got yeah. So Jennifer Knight, Brandon Brown. Um, is your contention that? Um, it's my contention is they're not registered at this address. Um, let me just double check. I have to apologize. I kind of got caught up in a whole. Kind of a snafu of paperwork here. Okay. So, yeah. No um, problem. Take your time. There's a lot of uh, it's voluminous. Yeah, some paper clips that are paper. not my friend right now. So the so the the um, so the, the 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 argument before was that if that um, that that we, you asked for these and didn't receive them and the conclusion was that they weren't registered. Correct. That's correct. Thank you. But I did find her sheet here, so I may stand corrected as page uh, for Jennifer Knight. Sheet one dash seven or line yeah. seven. Okay, so Jennifer well, that Knight. That one would be uh, not sustained. Right, because we've correct. We we've, did find her that she's a registered voter. Right. So, I've, I've, yep. so item A under paragraph two is not sustained. Mm -hmm. um, how about? And so Brandon Round and Christine now no, um, you contend that you requested those and they were not delivered and it's come to the conclusion that they're not. And for the record, those are the two remaining uh, individuals in paragraph two. Uh, Brendan Round would be 2B and uh, Christine now would be 2G. Right. Correct. Their, their records were not available through the clerk's office. Okay. All right. So we are, are we ag agreeable to sustain those two then? Yes. Huh? I would agree. Okay. And B and G are sustained. So we'll go on to item three, paragraph three, item A. Um, the argument is that Ms. Doffler is not in district. Mm -hmm. um, and... I believe this might be the same individual that was referred to uh, as uh, Lauren Dowder in 3A and uh, Dina Darling right. matter. And in that case, we found that... Uh, that it was not sustained. Not sustained. Right. She did live in Cary. Right. So uh, we're going to not sustain that one? I, I would say so, unless you have some new evidence to... Yeah. All right, so then we move on to paragraph four. Um, arguments for these are that the signatures are not genuine. Correct. Starting with uh, sheet one, line six, Abby Irwinbau. I apologize if Abby's in the room and I ruined her name. Board, what did you do on that Lauren Dorfler? Uh, not, not sustained. sustained. Not 3A, sus Lauren Doffler's objection is not sustained. The d objection as to Lauren Doffler is not sustained. I went and messed up the order on these. Yeah. Here we go. You too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of paper flying around. All right, so Ms. Dorfler... Oh, right. Erlen Bartholomew. And then while Joe's doing that, just for the record, I'll go through that 2A, not sustained, 2B, sustained, 2C, sustained, 2D, sustained, 2E, sustained, 2F, sustained, 2G, sustained, 
uh, 3A, not sustained, and then we're up to uh, paragraph four, which we're working on now. Right. Okay. What's the running count on a non-sustained? Is that two? Uh, we have, I believe we have two, two. non-sustained at this point. Yeah. Uh, so, Ms. Erlenbau on sheet one, line six. So, um, you know, the, the first name is, is uh, very unique and seems to be intact. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But the last name... Not so much. Do you, um, Ms. Riding, do you have an affidavit to Ms. Erlenbaum? Has the board deemed the objection sustained? Um, Let's see. I think we should probably go that route first. Yeah, sorry. So. Yeah. Um, Boy. I think the A, uh, beginning the, the name, is in a distinctive, uh, like Joe's term, flourish. Uh, so that leads towards it being genuine, but then the rest of the name, oh, but you know what? The two names are joined as they are in the exemplar as well. Uh, can you make out an E? I don't really see an E in the last name, a definitive no. E on the petition as there is on the exemplar. No. Uh, it's, this one's a close one for me, but I would say, um, uh, that, that, that is not genuine and therefore would sustain the objection. I would have to say as well. I agree. The first name is clear, but the last name is not. Yeah. Uh, so. And thou will go to you. Does the candidate have an affidavit to rebut that? We do not. Okay. So that right. will be sustained. sustained. The objection as to uh, 4A sustained. Um, just for, do we have any, does James have any after this? Yes. Yep. Oh, here we go. Yep. 60, okay. Um, sheet two, line one, name unknown. This is this is a. Well, do we have a uh, Mr. Johnson? Do you have any record of who lives at 421 Bristol Way, Cary? I do not. We're talking about 342 Carl Sands. Well, is, is there for uh, Mr. Vinton? Is there? Um, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there? Okay. Is that four twenty or four forty? Are you looking for an assistant job? Sheet two, line one is three forty two. Here we go. Four twenty one. Yeah. So what we're looking at uh, for the benefit of the others is um, a screen print from our voter registration system that shows uh, who is registered at 421 Bristol Way, which is the apparent address here. The two names that appear are uh, Adam Robert de Alba and Rene Kasich. Given that the signatures of the two people who are there, huh? well, I would say this one's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, but at this point, why don't we um, why don't we revisit this one later if necessary? Because it 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 seems pretty close, but. Yeah. Unless you'd like to vote to uh, uh, well, not sustain that. I think we could be more definitive and uh, perhaps later on. I think we could revisit this one. I would suggest that we, we come back to this one, uh, if necessary. 
I'm, I, I think I understand your point because it is so uh, potentially vague that we could make a better argument on a perhaps. So all right, Precisely. I'm agreeable to Precisely. to go into the to the next. That's fine, Robin. So I'm sorry. I would, I was uh, we're, we're going to come back to this one, Mr. Johnson, uh, in the event that it's necessary because we believe that there might be a decision that will be more definitive on some other okay. of these. And that was for 421 Bristol Way, correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. the, Okay, yes. that's the one I just finally. So okay. that okay. would be in. So thank you. So that's on Nom 4B. We're going to uh, hold that one and come oh, back to it if necessary. And then, uh, well, how about, I would suggest that on these name unknowns, we're going to run into a similar problem on these. And so 4A, we, I mean, uh, paragraph four, we have um, B, C, D, four, and E. Yeah, we have four name unknown objections, and those are four B, C, D, and E. And uh, I suggest that we come back to those later if necessary. Yeah, I agree. I'm in agreement. Okay. So now we're on to 4F. Is so that right, Joe? Yeah, sheet two, line five, Lisa Nara. All right, and let me see if I can bring her record. Here we go. So, where are sheet two, line five? Uh. All right, uh, I'm going to say that the Y at the end of the name uh, doesn't finish with that kind of curl over. But I think it, it might have just got cut off. In the no, I'm saying up at, it doesn't finish up at the top. This one oh. kind of comes off to the side, doesn't conclude above the, the, the actual letter itself. Well, let me just see what, how's, is this supposed to be a J at the end there? Is that what I he's think making so, there? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, hmm. well. I'm going to uh, sustain that objection. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the other side of that I'm one. I'm going to disagree. Um, I think the signature is very close. Uh, the one from the clerk's office is more spread out, and I think if you kind of smushed it together, it looks a very similar to what's on the petition. And the beginning of the, the, the L, L is very similar. and It's very distinct. Yeah. Uh, so it's... So it's three... Two to, uh, two to two to one to uh, not, sus uh, not sustain the objection. Not right. Sustained. So 4F is a not sustained. Yes. Which brings us to two not sustained right. thus far. Yeah. No, I have three. Do you have three? Oh, yeah, we have the 3A uh, right, so as well. So we have three not sustained at this point. Uh, Lene Babic, item G, which is sheet two, line six. <clears throat> so for me, um, the, the uh, reference signature is um, very, shall I say, very nice handwriting where the um, the signature on the petition just is not. And also, uh, the last three letters of the last name uh, fade off on the petition, whereas on the exemplar they are clear and distinct with a um, uh, very distinctive flourish K at the end. Uh, so. Based on that, I would say not genuine and sustain the objection. I would agree. I, would, I also agree. On to we, we haven't. Oh, oh, oh that, now we go to, thank you. Yes, uh, we'll go sorry. to uh, the candidate. Does the candidate have an affidavit to rebut that? We do. Uh, we have a, an affidavit by voter Lene Babic. It is contained in the packet and referenced as number 13. Pages 39 to 42. Okay. And then I see in this case we have your table of contents again. So then we make yeah, that decision. We easier. could go down here the contents and yeah. determine if they have an affidavit. And so here's, here's the affidavit. 
where Lene swears that she's at 7706 South Meadow Lane, signature on sheet. On page 41, as to this candidate. Oh, sorry. Uh, sheet two, line six, and she swears that that is her signature. So based on that, I would say that it was genuine and not sustained. And I apologize to Gretchen if I'm speaking too fast. Sometimes I'll slow it down a little bit for our I corporate would agree. reporter. Would you agree? I also agree. I would object. Just based on uh, the affidavit here that's showing exhibit. Uh, Exhibit two is a copy of identification in the form of a piece of mail. Well, uh, it, it's more the it's more the issue that she is making a sworn statement that this is her uh, that she did sign that that piece of paper. And I, I, I the objection is signer not a proper person and not genuine. And as I understand it, that the um, that a uh, uh, an affidavit is a common uh, coin used in these sort of proceedings. That is correct. Yeah. With or without any sort of uh, uh, piece of mail or identification or, or whatever. And the question so is- over your objection, the, the board finds that- uh, um, A piece of mail is acceptable? Well, so it's not, so it's not a question. The, the piece of mail might have been included to establish her address. That's not really a question. Yeah. The question is whether or not she signed. She has made a sworn statement that she did. And because of that, I think we overruled that objection. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, for the record, 4G would be not sustained, right. which brings us to 4, four not sustained. Okay, now on to Jason, on to Jason. <laughs> um, let's see, and he is sheet two, line seven. Um, so this is compared to that. Oh, sorry, that's right. Line seven? Yeah. Well, uh, while it's more of a condensed signature on the petition, the N is uh, distinctive and the of the last name, and the J is also distinctive of the first name, uh, which leads me to uh, say that this is a genuine signature, and therefore the objection is not sustained. Yeah, I'd agree. I also agree. Next uh, is a line on a name unknown, and I think we're under agreement that we'll come back to that. Um, right, so we, uh, what one is that? That's item I. Say. All right, so paragraph for four. I, we will revisit if necessary, and um, well, we'll just go as we go. Yeah. So for I, will revisit. And then J, which is Brian Coleman, sheet two, line 10. Based on my uh, analysis, it looks like the signatures uh, on, or the signature on the exemplar uh, has a, for lack of a better description, a leftward lean, and the signature on the uh, petition okay. itself is has a rightward lean, and is otherwise not similar to the signature on the exemplar. Therefore, I would say not. Uh, genuine and therefore sustain the objection. Agreed. I agree. Agreed. We have an affidavit in support. Do you? Of okay. Brian Cole. Mr. Coleman, he's line 17 in our packet, Coleman, Coleman, pages 55 through 58. Sorry. And where are we here? There you go. 
the specific candidate sheet for Mr. Coleman is page 56. And so on this, Mr. Coleman attests to his address, 337 Adam Court, uh, and that he signed page two, line 10 for Jason Janzak. That seems to be in, in order. And I also might note that it looks like they were signed by the both, both the affidavit and the petition were signed by the same felt type pen. Yeah. All right. So um, not sustained. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed? Yes, agreed. Not sustained. For, for J. 4K on to sheet three. Troy Thurwell on line five. By my count, we're presently at six not sustained. Is, is Correct. That's Thanks. what I have to. All right. So, line five, Troy Thurwell. Um, that is another, for lack of a better description, and without offending anybody, a smear signature, but the initial... Uh, letter looks very similar but we could we could move on to a more definitive one but at this point I would say that that is a genuine signature and therefore I would not sustain the objection I would also uh, agree in a you know when I look at the reference signature and I put my eye to the page I pretty automatically come to his signature it's more of a mark right really than uh, a collection of letters and words, which is not unlike mine. Um, but uh, I would say that they are similar enough that I believe it was the genuine person who did it. You feeling? I agree. They are very close. Okay. So objection not sustained for uh, K. For K not sustained. And then uh, Whitney Seegers is next, sheet three, line eight. Based on the distinctive middle initial L of the flourish on that, uh, I am going to say that is a genuine signature. Um, uh, that was close, though, because uh, the last name, the, the exemplar, uh, the, ex the exemplar signature has the last um, three letters, whereas in the petition, it seems to end at the upstroke of the G. So actually, uh, I, I'm inclined to say uh, not genuine and sustain the objection. I'm agreeable. Robert. I agree. Yeah. We have an affidavit. In Do you? Okay, great. Individual. <clears throat> that is on line eight of our table of contents, pages 20 to 22. So in the affidavit, Miss Seegers attests to her address on Wolf Street and Cary, and that she was, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I had the wrong page for the wrong candidate. Here we go. Um, that she was on uh, petition page three, line eight, for Jason Janzak. It was uh, notarized, sworn. So given that, I would say that the objection is not sustained. Agreed? I agreed. I agree, not sustained. 
which brings us, I believe, to eight. Eight. And what was our number here, Mr. Chairman? Seven. 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 Is there any ne uh, necessity for us to proceed? I further? just want to go through them all because they're so much fun. <laughs> I think we're all having a great time. <laughs> Would, does the audience agree? Yes. <laughs> so, no, I, I appreciate your consideration today, uh, Your Honors, and, uh, you know, we're just uh, trying to trying to uh, be thank very you. diligent on what we do here. And, uh, sure. Yeah, appreciate the time. Yep. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right, yeah. then, is it the thank decision you. of the board, then, that the uh, objection be uh, overturned and that Mr. Janzak remain on the ballot. Yes. Yes. Very good. And that we will reconvene. Are we still on the 17th at 10? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. For the final uh, For decision, the writing. written decision. Yep. And we'll give you folks a minute to get your things together. Do the same. Yeah. Is there any objection from uh, either side of, of pushing through and proceeding without a break here? At no this objection. Point? I just got to clean up my okay. stuff here. Aye. So thank you. Once again, I'm impressed by your civility on both sides so, uh, right now as was just displayed here. Very much. The rolling file cabinet. <laughs> Probably not for this room. I know. Perfect. Right. Just about done. They're going to remain with the record. I, I, would I think, think they would remain with the record. I think that's what yeah. we're doing. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. because what, right. you know, like what happens if anybody files an appeal with the circuit court, then we file the whole record with the right. court. Do, do you want a copy? Yeah. yeah. Do you want one of the copies? I have all the copies. Okay. I just wanted to make sure those were either in my custody or. Right. And all right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> my drinks. All right. Okay. Next up, we have uh, Mr. Frederick Bach versus Stephanie Hausch. Oh, yeah, okay, I see. Now, in this case, at a prelim oh, uh, as a preliminary matter, uh, there's no, no carryover or transfer from any of our previous findings. I, wouldn't think I don't so. think so. No. Yeah. Okay, so this would be a fresh. Gretchen, would you please uh, swear in the uh, participants? Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Bach, you may proceed when you're ready. Continue with the fun, right? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Frederick E. Bach, and I live at 6004 Smith Road in Crystal Lake, Illinois. I'm a registered voter at this address and reside with Prairie Grove Community School District 46. I am a citizen desirous to see that the laws of governing the filing nomination papers for nomination to the office of the member of the Board of Education of Prairie Grove School District 46 
of the state of Illinois are properly complied with and that only qualified candidates have their names on the ballot as candidates for the said office. Therefore, the objector makes the following objections to the nomination papers of Stephanie Hausch as candidate for nomination of the office of member of the Board of Education of Prairie Grove School District 46 of the state of Illinois and files the same here with the states that said nomination papers are insufficient in law. Objector states that the nomination papers herein contest consists of various sheets supposedly containing the valid and legal signatures of 60 individuals. The individual objections cited herein with specify reduce the number of valid signatures by 14 to 46, which is four below the statutory minimum requirement of 50. Additionally, objector states that all of the petition sheets for Ms. House are improperly notarized since the official notary seal on the sheets have expired on November 14, 2022, prior to the date of the assertion listed as 12-12-2022. Both the notary and Mrs. House were under obligation to verify the proper preparation certification of these documents in accordance with the Illinois Election Code and make any necessary corrections prior to submission. My pleading contains the specifics of my case as you will see outlined in my petition. And so I have my petition there. All right, and then I think also as a preliminary matter, um, will the candidate and the candidate's counsel please identify themselves for the record? Sure. My name is Stephanie Hausch. I reside at 38, <clears throat> excuse me, 15 Monica Trail in Crystal Lake, Illinois. And are you represented by counsel today? No, my name is Josie Shattuck. I am uh, on the board with uh, Stephanie Hausch and I'm joining her today for support. All right. But you won't be. Correct. Got it. Thank you. Are you ma'am proceed? <clears throat> So should we get to the specifics in uh, paragraph eight? Um, I suggest that we follow our uh, <laughs> protocol that we established earlier and determine what the magic number of the not sustained objections are well, once reached that the objector would not be able to prevail. And what, uh, what number is what number do you believe that to be sir? could we address the second count first with the notary yeah but uh, what we're doing now uh, from uh, on our earlier oh, this morning we're be, trying um, to determine what the number of not sustained we had, is um, bef that once reached um, the objector would not be able to prevail afterward well she had 60 so we'd have to get 11 no. 11 not sustained not four right. what's that four no, I would need, yeah, four that would be non sustained because I have 46 okay. legit, and then I would need to get to 50. Correct? Yeah, here, is that here's, how it is? Here's, here's the math that I did, guys, and you, you saw my math earlier, so double check me here. But there's 60 signatures obtained. Right. There are 14 total objections. With, and if all of those objections were held valid, were sustained objections, it, it'd bring it down to 46 good uh, signatures so it seems that the number is four if there are four of these objections that are not sustained then the objection would fail is that the number yeah yes. would you have two sir both sides are in agreement that they have four non sustained right, yes. right. Okay. all right thank you okay and so uh, mr. Bach you you had started to say that you you didn't want to start with um, Paragraph eight, because you believe that there was a different, a better place to start. Well, I wanted to ask you about the um, improper notary seal on, on her. That paragraph eleven that you. Well, speaking? I would suggest that we, um, you, Mr. Buck, you have to present your case. You can't ask the yes. board about um, their opinion. And I then think. I would also suge suggest that we look to see if that would be necessary. Uh, So I think uh, a paragraph nine would probably, 
Is that where we've been finding the most of the non-sustains? Is uh, if, is the petition signatures well, don't match? I think I think what he's saying is, if if we right. allow him to just so your point is that you would like to start on page eleven, on paragraph eleven rather. Yeah. Mr. Bach can present his case how he wants to. Right. Right. I mean, he was started. Yeah. We asked him, yeah. and he started making a statement. And yeah. We I was just him. wondering, as far as the uh, having um, I see what an expired notary notarize all of these signatures, does that disqualify right off the bat? So it's it's sort of your I job see. to prove that it does. Well, it's on the. Um, I see. It's on the bottom of all the. Um, and you're saying that applies to all of the petitions? Yes. The, uh, One, two, three, four, the five, date six. is, is um, of the petitions are 12, 12, 22, and a notary's um, seal expired November 14, 2022. And All right. Uh, I see what you're saying. You're, you want to invalidate all of the petitions Correct. based on the notary. Correct. All right. And then um, what uh, is your authority uh, uh, on that? What's your basis? Well, just looking at the bottom of, of No, but I'm, I'm saying what is your basis that the... Oh, just evidence as is then. But I'm saying, what is your basis that the uh, the uh, imp the allegation of an expired um, uh, notary seal on the nominating petitions would necessitate uh, those um, nominating petitions to be stricken? Is there is there I'm just statutory or case law or? something like that that you can point to that would say that because of that <coughs> that's what you're getting at yes. I'm, I'm just going to reread my original objection um, the objector states that all the petition sheets and the candidate statement for mrs house are improperly notarized since the notary seal on the sheets have expired on january 14 2022 prior to the date of a Assertion listed as 12 12 2022. So both the notary and Mrs. Howitz were under obligation to verify the proper presentation and certification of these documents in accordance with the Illinois Code, election code, and make it necessary corrections prior to submission. And that was not done. So are you reading from your uh, verified objector's petition, that language? Uh, where was that part that you just could, read? Um, could you direct that, direct us, direct the board to that language that you just recited uh, could you direct us to where that is contained in your verified objector's petition? Um, like what paragraph are you reading from, I guess, is what we're asking. Um, if you are reading from a paragraph, because I, I, I can't seem to find that language. Oh, I see what you're, are you going to your request for? Is that my for opening statement? Do you have that? Oh, no, got no we've, got, uh, we've got your, okay. the petition that was filed with us serve to the candidate. Okay. So, Mr. Bach, just to put a point on this for you, what we're asking for, okay, so, you're, so you're pointing out what you believe to be a deficiency that would invalidate them, so we're, is there uh, a citation in statute or in law yeah, that says uh, the absence 11, of that? Um, paragraph 11? Paragraph expired notary seal. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the Illinois Notary Public Act is the responsibility of every notary to keep the seal in accordance with the act. Right. That would be a violation, it would seem, of the Notary Public Act. Is, does something, is there something in statutory law or um, or to put a further law? point on that, is there anything in your verified petition that cites to a legal authority where that uh, uh, the no expired notary seal on the petitions would require that the petitions be uh, stricken? Right. Do you have a specific legal authority in the election code? I I don't know. Okay. I'm just I'm just going by. Well, based on that, my f I I would. It would be self-evident that it's a violation, right? If you're you're documenting something that is expired, well, how can you verify something if it's already expired? It's not being truthful. Should we allow the candidates to respond at this Does point? Does the candidate have a, a response to that? I do. I mean, I have proof that she never expired. Like in a sense of like she had already renewed before her seal was up the f when she stamped. Okay, could you show that to yep. Mr. Bach? Yeah. And actually, give it to Chris, and she'll yeah. mark it as evidence for us. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I see. That's why she's here. That's why she's here. Uh, okay. Yeah. When she stamped it, it also wasn't expired when she stamped it. And then if you look at, like I said, and she's here if you need to talk to her, but if you look at her, the so one the, sheet. The, so Ms. McAvoy is here, is yes, what you're saying? Right oh, here. okay. All right. Yep. That helps. Okay. Yeah. And I, yeah. And so the one form is her, um, the 2018, you see the November 18, 2018, or the November 18, 14, 2018 to November 14, 2022, and then she got the other one on October 20th, 2022, to renew already even before the previous one was expired. Right. Okay. So it's an overlap, so she technically never was expired. Okay. All right. So based on that and the fact that the objector cannot cite to any legal authority where um, an expired stamp on the petition itself necessitates uh, the petitions to be stricken under the election code, uh, I would say that he has not met his burden on that. I would agree. I also agree. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Bach, um, do we want to go back to uh, paragraph eight then and start there, or is there a different um, place you'd prefer to go? Uh, yes, let's go to paragraph eight. Okay. And so uh, paragraph eight, item A, refers to sheet two, line eight, uh, Carrie Hall, and your argument is that uh, that person is not uh, registered to vote at the address listed on the petition. Is that correct? Yes. All right, let me get that in front of me here. Do you have... Uh, Evidence to show where she is registered to vote? On the, um, I have a last page where I, where I had gotten information from the clerk. Okay. Uh, they list all of the names at that address and her name is not there. And I, have, I object to that because he technically Please. didn't go to the clerk's office. Can I And I have this? proof of that. So hold, well, hold that thought a second here. So. And I have the FOIA that proves that he wasn't the one who went to the clerk's office. Like the person that goes, looks at all the information. Right. And how does that, how does that? How um, does he know then what my, paper, you know, what everything says? He said that he went and he didn't go. I will be a, um, I talk to the we'll be a little um, flexible on, uh, on our pr uh, rules of the procedure here. But I think what we, in this particular case, differing from this morning, or earlier this morning, <clears throat> I think we m 
might uh, let the objector proceed with his entire case, and okay. then we'll hear your, your responses. Okay. To, if that's, mm -hmm. I think that would be the most. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, expedient agree. way to. Okay. That's fine. So, Mr. Bach, if you have evidence, um, would you first show it to to the uh, candidate, and then Chris will mark it as such, and then we'll uh, look at it as you. Yeah, can um, we ask what's, what's, uh, I'm hopefully sorry. Hopefully I have a sudden now. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask who this new yeah. person coming to the table is? No, and thank you, yeah. With their, oh, I'm sorry, same situation. No. Just yeah, and, then, and that's why I'm going to have to enforce that the, any witnesses will have to wait in the, uh, for lack of a better term, the uh, gallery uh, until you're called, if you are called. And so let's just have the objector and the candidate sure. or any if they're represented by counsel, they may have counsel present, but other than that. Granted. Thank you. Okay. So let's start with uh, Carrie Hall, item 8A, and your argument is that she is not registered to vote at the address listed on the petition, which um, is 3615 Monica Trail, if I'm reading that right. Is there... Is there information in this packet? It'd be on the very last page. Okay. And what is this we're looking at here? Could you describe it for this? Me? This is our um, where the clerk sent information on who actually lives at that address, and there's no carry listed there. no record of her name being at that address. I'm sorry, could you speak up? I and there's no record of her name being at that address. Okay. So, um, given that for the moment, I would so, be inclined to um, sustain that objection. And just so we're clear, now we're on paragraph 8, uh, and we're dealing with paragraph 8A, uh, Carrie Hall. And we're trying to determine whether or not the individual is registered to vote at that ad address listed on the petitions. And this is a certified copy uh, from the clerk's office yep. of the list of voters uh, at that address. And Carrie Hall does not appear on that. So therefore, I would sustain the objection. Agreed. Now we'll be moving on to 8B. Well, I or do you have any conferred well, with? I think that's that's a good idea. We'll we'll use that same procedure mm -hmm. individually. Yep. Now, do you have a, a rebuttal? You do not. Okay, so we'll sustain that. Okay. Um, item 8B is Jeff Gordon on 5173 Meadowbrook Lane, and Mr. Bach, do you have similar support? Well, on the petition he has down at 5173, and in your court records you have him at 5713. So it's it's the wrong number. And where is that on the petition? Uh, right, uh, uh, line five. Okay, and what is the ac actual address? 5713. Five, Oh, and it does look like the street address listed on the petition for nomination is definitely 5173. And it could have been an inadvertent thing, but it does not match. So based on that, I would sustain the objection. Uh, um, 
And yeah, how about the rest of the board? I'm still thinking. Yeah. I, and then the, should we ask the candidate if they, if you have any rebuttal? I mean, my only rebuttal is he is in my neighborhood, but yeah, I mean, I know the address, but. Yeah, and do you have any? You don't have any. You don't have any affidavits? I don't have affidavits. Okay. Correct. Just wanted to make sure we don't All overlook right. that if you have them. Based on that, I would uh, sustain the objection. So what, what um, is conflicted in me is the possibility that this is a Scrivener's error and that this is this Mr. Gorton um, is the legitimate um, and if we're deliberating that I would submit that uh, your own address is not something that you would be, would be uh, normally uh, confused about Right, but it could have been confused when it was entered into the system either by the clerk, oh, I Secretary of State. State, any number of those could have juxtaposed those two numbers. So then I will go, I would ask the uh, candidate if you have any evidence uh, that there's a discrepancy between the, the, uh, the actual address of this individual and the address that we have or that the county has on their, uh, what are we calling this, the uh, voter record. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to, to this? I mean, I'm not, I don't have like an affidavit. I mean, that's what you need, correct? Right. That yeah. would be yeah. some evidence. That would be, yeah. So based on that, I would say. I mean, yeah, can I call the guy? <laughs> I mean, no, but I mean, I mean, like you say, Joe, it is possible that there is a discrepancy, but uh, I would yeah. say, but based on the evidence that we have before us, we would, I would sustain the objection. Yeah, yeah, I would have to agree. I have to agree. It might just be an unfortunate uh, transposition of numbers. Yes, we have no proof. Be. Right. We talk to Mr. Gordon, have him give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this is final here today. For no, us. I mean to correct He's saying to correct yeah, right. it in general. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. You had your different hat on on that one. Right. Uh, so now on to eight. Um, 8C, uh, sheet five, line nine, Drew Hall. Again, there's no record of. And then again, we did find uh, that a, a person with the same last name, Carrie Hall, we sustained that objection. And did we have the, uh, the list of the people who were registered? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I may have I've seen yeah. a hall on it. you. No, it's all burnt. No, it's all burnt. Yep. So, okay, yeah. 36, 15. So that is also oh, sustained. sustained. So that uh, would be sustained. Uh, and the board's in agreement? Yes. 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 All agreed. So that brings us to paragraph nine. The argument here is that the signatures do not match the signatures on file. Um, <laughs> Those signatures are identified as follows, starting with sheet one, line eight. And that is Jennifer Dallas. Sorry, I don't have enough coffee to offer everybody. <laughs> I apologize. So I'm having a hard time finding much similarity. Well, I do see the L's are pretty similar. Uh, how about that? Is that the D in the last name? I don't think the L's line up at all. You got well, a tight L and then you got a wide L. We're deliberating, but we have to deliberate on the record, so we're oh. doing it out loud. I right. apologize. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, do you, well, how do you two feel? I kind of feel like it's a, it's a sustained objection. I, I don't see much similarity, honestly, between any of it. I would agree. And, and so then my vote really went, mm -hmm. went uh, so we'll have to go with sustained on yes. that. Yes. Yeah. That's a close one for me. It would, be, it would be two to one regardless. All right. Next up is Ryan Kerrigan, sheet one, line 10. This one here is, uh, and we don't know the, the passage of time between the signature on the exemplar and the signature on the petition, And but uh, based on the evidence we have here, the signature on the exemplar is distinctive and uh, the signature on the petition is what I've, the term I've used earlier, uh, a, a smear signature. Uh, so therefore, I would uh, sustain the objection and say that it's not genuine. Yeah, I would agree. I yeah. also agree. Next, we have Sh Ryan Eberly, sheet three, line six. Reference signature is light, which makes it a little harder. Five, six. Uh, I do see a distinctive E and the last name. How about the uh, E? Beyond that, I'm B. having a hard right. time finding yeah. anything else. Yeah, how about the, the Ys B. are different? Yeah, let's see. They're very different. Oh, yeah, the Y and this one is a more of like a a printed Y in this petition signature uh, versus a, a flourishing cursive Y yeah. in this signature. So based on that, I would say uh, not general, uh, not genuine, and I would sustain the objection. Agreed. I agree. Next, Diana Horrington. Horrigan. I'm sorry. That's it. Oregon. <laughs> Sheet three, line nine. So, right there. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, here again we have a distinctive handwritten H uh, printed, for lack of a better term, on the petition versus a kind of a cursive flourishing H on the exemplar signature. And how about, yeah, they're very dissimilar, and therefore I would say not genuine and sustain the objection. Agreed? Agreed. I have an affidavit. Oh, okay. oh, do you? Oh, okay. Oh, yes. I, I, was, I knew what I, you know, the, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any other affidavits? I do. All right. Do, uh, do you have just one set, or how many sets? I have a copy for everyone. Oh, okay. Thanks. If, if, if that's we may. what you would like. And then I, I think we would require the originals, please. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm giving. Thank you. Okay. Those are, yeah, those are all the originals. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have an affidavit from Diana Horrigan, 5718 Farm Hook, signature on sheet 309, and she swears that it's her. So given that, I would um, not sustain that objection. And based agreed. on that, I agree, not sustained. Yes, based on the affidavit, not sustained. <clears throat> All right. Next is sheet four, line two. Matt Easley. This one just jumps off the page, and I don't find them similar <laughs> in the least. Uh, well, yeah. He, well, the thing is, on this one, uh, 
The petition uh, signature is really not a signature. It's actually a uh, printed name in both boxes where the signature is to appear and also where the printed name is to appear and uh, does not match the exemplar signature whatsoever. No. So based on that, I would sustain the objection. Do you have a, a affidavit Yeah, it's the next here? one. They're all in order of okay. oh, going down you. the line. Yeah. Don't you have to sign it, though? I mean, just to have it printed and then say, okay, I'll sign it later? I mean, shouldn't that all be part of the petition when you turn I this in? Ideally, but um, a, an affidavit certifying that they did sign it um, is a... Well, they really didn't sign it. They well, just printed it. It doesn't well, matter. It's yeah. their mark. It, it, isn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be cursive. I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So here we have... Mr. Easley's uh, affidavit, where he uh, attests that he mm -hmm. did sign on page four, item two, and uh, swears to it and signed it. And so based on that, I would uh, say the objection is not sustained. And yes. Agreed. Yes. That brings us to uh, item F, which is sheet four, line three, Alexandra Easley. Let me see, what number was that? Uh, sheet four, line three. So there it I mean, uh, other than it's uh, just a mark more than words. The first name begins the same writing and then it kind of drifts off on the petition. Yeah, I agree with that. Now how about, we've got an EY at the end there and uh, hmm. there's a distinctive E on the exemplar. Do, uh, do we see that present and the signature? It's, can we I make know. out where the last name begins? I don't believe so. No. I say the closest similarity is the first letter and the first name, but after yes. that, it's kind of goes up. Do you have a, an affidavit here as well? And right. so, first of all, we're going to say that it's uh, uh, the objection is sustained. Yes. And, and then we're going to go to the candidate to see if right. she has an affidavit yes. to rebut that, and she d says she does. So we're not going right. So she attests that she signed on page four, line three, and has uh, sworn to it. So based on that, um, I find that uh, the objection is not sustained. I would agree. Agreed. Okay, next we have Katie Giuliano, sheet four, line four. Uh, this is a very distinctive K on the exemplar, which is also present on the petition. Therefore, I would find that it is the uh, same signature, and therefore the objection is not sustained. Yeah, it certainly starts out dead on. The K-A-T is, um, and even what I'm guessing is a Y. The rest of it is really not even present, though. Last name pretty much is not there yeah, at all on the right. petition. It's smeared yeah. right off, which yeah. indicates to me that maybe, yeah, it might have been a... Do we have a, an affidavit from Ms. Giuliano? So based, based on what's just given in the example signature in the petition, I would say that um, the objection would be sustained, but... I would agree with agree? that. Agree? Yes. And but then based on the affidavit. We have an affidavit for Ms. Giuliano. So Ms. Giuliano is attesting that she's on signature page four, line four, um, and has uh, sworn to it. So based on that, I would uh, 
find that the objection is not sustained. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Which, by my record, now has us at three not sustained. Four. 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 Oh yeah, Katie, Ch that makes it four. There we go. Okay. So and what is our number on this? Four. One? But four. I, but as I did before, I right, would suggest I agree. Yeah. to do. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And in this case too, we don't have forty-five of them. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so we've got uh, Anthony Capello, uh, sheet five, line one. And we're just dealing with nine A through K in this instance. Here again, it's hard to find any similarity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and based on uh, what we have at this point, I would say uh, the objection is sustained. I would agree. I would agree. And then we go to where, and we do have an affidavit. And in the affidavit, Mr. Capello attests that he signed petition sheet five, line one, and uh, has sworn to. So based on that, I would find that the objection is not sustained. Not sustained. All right, and, and with that, I believe we have. That's, that's five. Yeah, we've exceeded. Um, Ms. Housh, did you have anything in terms of uh, rebuttal or closing statement or anything of that nature? No, just thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going by you know what the records were, and when we look at that, we probably would have found uh, enough to overturn it, but it, as long as we have affidavits, I mean, then there's no question on it, so. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir, and again, I both. commend yes. both of you for how you uh, comported yourselves here today, mm -hmm. civility and decorum. Yes, absolutely. And then I think we should say that our finding uh, in this case, uh, in uh, Stephanie K. Hausch, Name sh uh, shall be printed on the ballot. Right. Agreed. 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 Do you want to do that same? Do you want to do that same date? And yes. Re yes. Reconvene then on one seventeen at ten o'clock. Thank you, folks. She's not able to make it today. Oh no! We're, this was this one we just concluded. Well, we just completed. Oh. So we're, we're, we yes. continued to, to okay. for the written gotcha. decision. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a second part of this where we deliver a written yeah, decision. And you, you, you folks will not have to be present at that. At you can that. if you want to. You're yes. not required to. And thank you again. Yes. And so next up, <coughs> we have Josie Shattuck. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Um, may you, would you please state your name and spell it for the record? And also at this point, our court reporter has been uh, uh, here a long time and everybody else. Did any, do any of us need a break here? Uh, I don't think we're going to break for lunch. I think we're going to push through. We're going to try to push through. We have a hard stop at 2.30. Yes. Um, so if no one needs a break, we would like to continue if that's agreeable. Everybody agreeable? Uh, are you a party to the, uh, at this moment? <laughs> okay, thank you. You're free to take a break if you wish. You can do whatever you like. But we're going we're gonna, to uh, plod on. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank yeah. you. All right. Feel free to come and, and go then, as you, uh, as you so fit. Are we ready to call the next case? Are the uh, candidate and objector ready to proceed? Okay. All right. And no, I think what we should do also is please, uh, with the parties, please identify themselves, uh, state their name, and spell it for the yes. record. My name. We'll is, start with the objector first. My name is Fred Bach. B O C K. What else do you want? My name is Josie Shattuck. S H A T T U C K. And if you would administer the oaths. Put your hands right here. I do. I do. Thank you. 
All right. Well, uh, um, if the parties would have an opening statement, you may proceed. Yes, Mr. Bach. I'm just curious. Um, do you, do you have affidavits with a lot of these signatures? I see where you're going with that. You're seeing if you I could. Wanna, I want to save you right. time. If, Thank you. To go through this whole thing and then, because you know, like on this case, I was basing everything off right. signatures, which you were agreeing they were all bad. So right. if, I, if we're going to do the same thing again, we could save a lot of time. Well, thank you, sir. And as, do you have affidavits? I do. All right. And would you like to present them to the board, please? I'd like to proceed with the same process, just so that everything is clear. Well, for ex he's going to drop his objection if the affidavits uh, overcome uh, his objections. Wonderful. So. I'd like to submit my affidavits <laughs> for evidence. And have we, have we figured out what our uh, number that we have to These are the original. Yes, that's validate? Yes, that's right. Nine. Nine. And how many affidavits do you have there? I have 12. So that uh, overcomes the, th so those 12 would be non-sustained based on the affidavits. And if you need nine uh, to uh, defeat uh, the objection, then uh, I believe that, and, Ms., uh, and you agree with that? That yep. he's, she's got 12 affidavits, they need nine. Uh, and once we reach that number of nine not sustained objections, the objector would not be able to uh, prevail. And that therefore, since she has 12, uh, that we would say are not sustained by virtue of the fact that there's an affidavit presented, you would not be able to pr prevail. Is, uh, and you're agreeable to that. Yes. And in yes. fact, that was kind of your idea, Red. I, I right. appreciate you for, I appreciate your uh, thoughtfulness for, uh, cutting to the chase that way. For the sake of process, though, I'd yes. like to go through each of the uh, right. uh, affidavits good. and uh, Get address that the items the that they, they seem to address just to make sure that uh, everything is in order as it should be. Right, and then um, we'll also have that on the record. Yes, so the first affidavit is for a Jason Shipley who appears in 10B. And then also we should probably also, uh, do you have the actual objection? Uh, no, I'm looking for the actual objection. Yeah, uh, the petition. Which one are, are we on here? Is this it? Okay, yeah. let's look at the 10B and read on what the, uh, uh, let's look at paragraph so, 10. So what 10 is, the 10 is, that, is uh, an argument that the signatures on file do not match the uh, signatures on the petition. Right, okay, good. Um, so the first uh, affidavit presented was for Jason Shipley. Uh, he is identified in 10B. Uh, he has sworn that uh, he has uh, signed sheet one, line five, as indicated in the uh, uh, objection. And his affidavit appears to be in order. So based on that, I would say that the objection is not sustained. Not sustained, right. Not sustained. Uh, the next is Kevin Thies, who appears to be 10D like David. Sheet two, line two. The affidavit attests that he did, in fact, sign that. And it's uh, notarized and appears to be in order. So and based on that, I would find that the objection is not sustained. Indeed. Agreed. Stephen Singh is on the next affidavit. He's found as item E, like Edward, uh, having signed sheet two, line six. The affidavit swears that he did and is uh, properly signed and uh, notarized. Based on that, I would find that the objection is not sustained. Agreed. Agreed. Next is Christopher Broach. Christopher Broach is uh, 10 F like Frank. Um, it says in the complaint that he uh, signed sheet three, line two. Uh, the affidavit says that indeed he did and it seems to be in order. Based on that, I would find that the objection is not sustained. I agree. I agree. The um, next one is Lori Rotolo, who is item G on the uh, uh, complaint, having signed sheet three, line five. Uh, she attests 
to that and it appears that um, it appears that it is an order based on that uh, I would find that the objection is not sustained I agree Next up is Alexandria Andrzejewski, which is 10J, sheet three, line nine. And she attests to that and it is signed. Based on that, I would find that the objection is not sustained. I agree. Next is Katie Shelton appears in the objection as 10 L like Larry sheet 4 line 30 and I think that might be a typo I'm guessing line that three. means line 3, line three. which you meant in your objection because uh, it's in not words, 30 there's a typo lines in the petition. yeah a typo in the petition not in the affidavit no um, Ms. Shelton has attested that she has signed sheet 4 line 3 uh, and it has been uh, signed and uh, sealed by an um, Did we compare that to the petition? I mean, the, the yeah, actual I've got that. Oh, you've got I've that. Got yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so based on that, I would find that the objection is not sustained. I agree. I agree. Next is uh, Victoria Andrzejewski. And I'm, does Victoria go by the name Tori? Yes. Thanks. It would appear that she is item K, which is sheet three, line 10. As she has uh, sworn, and the uh, affidavit appears to be in order. Based on that, I'd find that the objection is not sustained. I Agreed. agree. Agreed, okay. Uh, next, we have Harrison Myatt. Uh, the objection shows him on sheet six, line three. He is attested to the same and find it to be in order. Based on that, I'd find that the objection is not sustained. I agree. Very good, me too. Um, next we have Mary Salvo. Uh, she and the objection is on sheet seven, line four. Her affidavit attests to the same appears to be in order. Based on that, I'd find that the objection is not sustained. I agree. I agree. Finally, we have Lori Bowden. She uh, is item P like Peter on the objection, line uh, six on page seven, and she attests to the same, and the uh, affidavit appears to be in order. Based, based on that, I would find that the objection is not sustained. Agreed. Agreed. So given that, it would appear that uh, the objector has not um, prevailed in this case, and so Ms. Shattuck will remain on the uh, ballot. Agreed. Question for clarification. Um, my particular petition, based on what my um, petitioner... I, I think... I think this concludes our, our hearing on this particular one. You've, uh, I, I understand. Yeah. Just uh, for, I guess, clerical purposes, is my petition being withdrawn or is it being... You're going to remain on the ballot. No, you're going to remain on the ballot. His objection uh, failed. I understand. Right. Um, it's I'm not withdrawn. It's not withdrawn. The objection is overruled or, or it is not sustained, the entirety of it. Right, right, right. I understand. However, my, my petitioner at the beginning stated he wished to withdraw his petition. I think there's, that's two separate things is my understanding. Yeah, but the board went through the we, hearing on it. Yeah, so. we, want, we went through the hearing. We want okay. to put it uh, on the record. I have one yeah. final thing I'd like to submit for evidence, please, um, to uh, go along with my... Well, at this point, it's no longer necessary, and with all due respect... You thought that the, the, the case is concluded, really. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck to you, folks. And yes. again, I, I, I uh, commend you for your civility and decorum. Thank you very much. Oh, and, and, and 
And there will be a written decision on this on that same date. You don't have to be here if you don't want to leave it mailed to you. I don't, I don't have any thoughts about it. That's up to you. <clears throat> well. Okay, so next up is uh, Anna Harla versus Randy Gauthier. Gauthier. And then, uh, does anybody on the board need a break, or does our court reporter need a break, or any of our other folks here? Um, you need a break. You wanna, huh? How about five minutes? All right, All right, let's take a five minute break. We'll be back here at uh, 12.35. Can I ask a procedural?
you're ready to proceed. Uh, we're not missing anybody? No, I don't think so. Okay. Are you folks ready to begin? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. Please uh, state your name and spell it for the record, beginning with the objector, please. Yes, my name is Anna Harlow, H-A-R-L-A. And to the degree that you can, if you can speak loud enough or get close enough to the microphone so they can hear you. I know. Oh. <laughs> and uh, to the candidate, please. Uh, my name is Randy Gothier. Okay. And Gretchen, would you mind administering the oath, please? I'm an attorney. Oh, would you also identify yourself? Sure, my name is Nancy Zettler. I'm attorney for Ms. Gothier. Okay, thanks. Could you raise your hands, please? <clears throat> Just tell me that you're about to give Ms. Gothier the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Maybe. Yes, I do. Can I, can I make a, I have to ask a, a procedural question? Sure. It's I think it's relevant. Sure, sure. Um, I'm also a, um, uh, a uh, candidate on the third, the last uh, yes. thing, and part of what um, Randy and Tola's complaints against them are based on things that I did as a notary, and I'm wondering if just to expedite all of this and make it a little quicker, if we could do my case first, and that way you can decide on whether or not what I did was inappropriate and in some way not, you know, I don't know if I'm making sense. I have motions uh, no, to No, I dismiss. understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And uh, so the order is is not written in stone, and if, if the board feels that it would be more expedient. And if Ms. Harlow, if you're agreeable as well, I see you've gotten your paperwork. I mean, I would like to, I did lots of, no, I mean, you would still have an opportunity to do it, but I think what what she's suggesting is that some of the issues that you raise are also raised in her case, and if yes. we dealt with her case first, we might be able to resolve those, and then we'll resolve both, and it'll be expedient. And you would still have your opportunity. Uh, the only, th only thing is we're just changing your order in the batting order. You'd be next up. I know, up. but I would like to go first. All right, so based on her objection, I, I guess we're going to stick with it. Okay, the, that's I, I, fine. I understand your... Uh, Have you guys had a chance to look at the objections and all that already or no? Yes. Okay, so yeah. you're familiar that there is a lap. That there's overlap. overlap okay, on, okay, yes. that's yeah, fine. Yeah, a number of them there were, yes. Okay. Yep. And all then right. so those that come up in here will probably also apply to your case. Of course. In, in, in either way, so it probably yeah. works out. So we're going to stick to the original order of the cases and call it as they were on the docket. Uh, one, more, one more quick one. I'm sorry. I have motions to dismiss this case, to, you know, her objection. Can I give those to you now, or do you want me to wait until it's my turn, our turn? Well, my feeling on that is... Uh, is there, is there a, a rule for allowing motions to dismiss? Yeah, you can. You, yeah. Yes, you can allow motions to dismiss, and they're relatively common. Yeah. And you can review those, have argument on those prior to even getting into the the testimony. Yeah, and uh, oh, my okay. and my uh, my my view is that we, sh uh, if she has a preliminary motion to dismiss, that we should hear her argument first and then uh, proceed. If okay, if that was my question. Was order really? Yeah. So okay. I have a copy for um, all three of you and also one for Mrs. Harlow. Okay, great. And then, and I'll, since she has a motion to dismiss, the burden will shift to her, so she'll go first, whereas normally you would go okay. first on your case. Oh, oh, it's a big one. <laughs> I have another one that's, do you want it? Just as, <clears throat> you know, I do make an, I do object to people from the gallery um, coaching during this. Um, without being on record as an attorney? Uh, sustained. Okay, thank you. Uh, you got that, folks? There, I gave you, I gave you. And that way we here. won't have cross talk and, you know. Yeah. Because it's really not a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where'd it go? I did give you four and I meant one for That's okay, that's okay. Nice. No base running either. These were all duplicate copies of the same. We, you gave us an extra one. I and oh, did, I you, did, did okay. you give a copy so, to, well, the, her, yeah. to the objector? Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Chris. Okay. And we'll just take a minute to run, to That's read fine. through this, and then we'll allow you to proceed. That's at fine. That
Based on the fact that we have a motion to dismiss before us, I would suggest that we pass this case. And uh, also, is there how many cases do we have left on There's our docket? We're up to two thirds. So let's do the. You you have you're here for two yours three. and three. three. Oh, you're here yes. for all three. She's the third. Oh, but, okay. I'm the third. <laughs> all right. So are there any? Uh, so there. So there's none others that are not related to this motion to dismiss. So independent of these. We're done with everything but three cases. Right. Okay. So um, are you going to have motion to dismiss in the other two cases yes. as well? Yeah, um, then what I would suggest is that um, we might allow her to give those. Well, you didn't provide these to the other parties? Yeah. I, I was going to do I can. Well, I, I, I think uh, in fairness, we ought to give them an opportunity sure. to read through them. and. Uh, I, I mean, honestly, these are like a, a way of preserving the record for myself, especially right. because there is case law in here that was not, that I'm assuming is not going to be provided by the other side. I understand that. Yes, I understand that. And but in fairness to them, yeah, I fine. you know I think that we've got a like you say, uh, a three-page uh, motion to dismiss, and we should give a, the opportunity to the objectors to at least uh, have an opportunity to read them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know if what would be a, a relatively since we're up against a hard break at two thirty. Uh, um, what would the board consider as far as? Uh, or let's also okay. ask the objectors: Do you need to, an opportunity to uh, to read through these yes. more? So yeah. yes, should, should we yeah. momentarily should we should we allow Ms. Zettler to uh, okay. present this? motion uh, no, I don't and think then so give her because a chance to read it I, I think it respond. would be fair it would be fair for them to uh, well in other words we have it right but she she has an opportunity to speak to it uh, I think that would I think that would uh, we should give the objectors an opportunity to read it before we dive into it okay I'm, I, I mean, that's just way, it's not for a big fairness deal. Right. because yeah. you guys haven't seen this before all right so uh, rather informally um, did you want to give those copies to the sure. other uh, Absolutely. objectors? Is there more than one other obje objector? Or is it yes. the same? Yeah, right. There's two other objectors, right. and there's two other objectors. That's what I thought. So. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so then, uh, what, five minutes, 10 minutes? That's pretty brief, no matter what. Would uh, 10 minutes yeah. give you adequate time to no, give it a read? It's, okay. it's three pages. No. Okay. For her yeah. to, to read the. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you. What? Uh, let's, no no comments from the galleries. For I do. I'm uh, hang on one second. No, we're not off the record. Okay. Hang on, everybody. We're not off the record, uh, and so uh, I, I didn't hear what was said between the parties, but let's ma maintain the civility and the decorum that was uh, demonstrated and displayed earlier today in our previous hearings. Okay, everybody? Yes. And, uh, All right, and then uh, we'll give a, about a five-minute opportunity for the objectors to read the, uh, okay, sure. to read the motion to dismiss. <laughs> They're rather straightforward. Well, I mean, we're up against a 2.30 uh, uh, deadline, so that's, that's the reason we're doing that. We want to get this completed. as. Like well, there's a motion. No. Yeah, we're, oh, oh, we're off the record. record. Oh, hang on a second. I, I apologize. We're breaking this a little informal since we're dealing with all three of these at once. So what we're going to do? Let's call. Should be a. Should be a uh, I'll call all three of them. Yeah. Let's call all. Oh, let's. We'll, we'll deliberate on the board. I suggest we call all three of them, and then she can present the. She can give the motion to dismiss to all three of them. We could get uh, on the record any objections or any counter motions on their part, and consider those, and then determine what to do at that point. It's, a, it's up to you guys if you're agreeable to that. That's my suggestion. And also. Well, but I, but I, honestly, I think that for the record of this, you have to treat each one separately. Yeah, okay. Right. And, and it may be that the rulings and the, right. what, the, what Monday, the board we... decides and what the, it may flow over to, <laughs> hey, you know what we've decided on the first, but you can't, you can't merge them all. All right, how about this? Can we go, um, can we say that we're going to go off the record and the candidates uh, are going to, uh, Ms. Settler is going to present her motion to, dis or provide the motion to dismiss to the three objectors 
uh, and then uh, we'll come back on the record and we'll deal with each individual case uh, independently. So but we'll give them recess opportunity for a few to minutes. Read. Is that what you're asking? I mean, yeah, and I'm asking for the for the motions to dismiss to be given to the objectors. And I think that's been done. It's been yeah, done. and then so that's been, been done. Five minutes. So, but 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 the, she's got objections, and we'll take them one at a time. I agree with you on that. This is one case right now. Right, right. It's one case. Right. The other objectors have all the time while this case right. is going on to read. That. Okay, that's good. Right. I have, I'm in agreement with that. Are you guys in yeah. agreement with that? I agree. So let's recess for ten minutes to give uh, the current objector, Ms. Harla, an opportunity Thank to you. read and digest. Thank you. We'll come back. Uh, check in with you to make sure that you have a grip. I read it, it doesn't seem very complicated. So we'll check back with you to see if you understand it and then we'll proceed from there. Does that make sense? That's fine, All thank right. you. So we'll be back in 1257. <laughs>
right, gotcha. Yes. Um, I, I appreciate the motion uh, to dismiss. Um, all of these points would be brought up in the course of discussing the case as it was brought by Ms. Mm -hmm. Carla. Um, to be <coughs> so I'm inclined, and I'm bringing this for discussion, um, to maybe take notice of this uh, motion, but rather than to act on the motion, to accept it as uh, some sort of documentary evidence, perhaps, and let Ms. Harla begin her case, making the argument for uh, her objection. And we may end up referring to this at some point. I, I think that's a good idea. And I think um, what we'll do is we'll proceed with her portion of the of the case and if she meets her burden mm -hmm. then in your uh, portion of the case we can start off by considering your motion to dismiss okay. at that point. That's Is that fine. agreeable yeah, to you? Yeah, that's agreeable. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So just to be clear for the purposes of going forward we're uh, at this moment not going to consider the uh, previously provided motion to dismiss by Ms. Zettler. We're going to set that aside for a moment and uh, proceed with the case of uh, Ms. Harla versus uh, Ms. Gauthier. Gauthier, yeah. Gauthier, I'm sorry. Ms. It's Gauthier, okay. Gauthier, Gauthier. So Ms. Harla, you would... I still would ask for extension. Yeah. I. We can't, do, we can't do that, Ms. Harla. This, the purpose of this today is to get this done. The, the, um, you have an argument and you need to present that argument. You need to support that argument. But I didn't get this. I, you, right. It, whether I you didn't had, read it, so I really... But whether you got that or not, she would still be making those arguments today. Okay. So we're, we're not, we're going to pretend we never saw that. She'll say all those same things, uh, right? Yeah. Um, it is not funny. This is... And then... I, I might understand. Also, this isn't your where you live, you know, but... I'm sorry, go ahead, Tom. I would also submit that even if we were to consider um, the counsel for the candidate's uh, motion to dismiss, um, it, it appears that there is a material question, there is a question of material fact uh, that would still remain uh, and that therefore I don't think that my preliminary uh, analysis of the uh, motion to dismiss is that um, there is a material, uh, there is an issue of material fact that is still present and therefore I think that the motion sure. to strike and dismiss uh, should be uh, denied. Yeah, I think we're just going to set it aside for now and we're gonna let Ms. Harla come with the case that she came with and uh, Proceed from there. You may Thank proceed. You. Thank you. Thank you to all judges for hearing my objections for the nominating papers for Mrs. Gautier today. My name is Anna Harla and I live at 922 Valley Stream Drive in Pingree Grove. I am registered to vote at this address in King County and I am resident of School District 300, D300. What I am requesting today is in a review of Mrs. Gautier Non nominating papers for members of Board of Education in School District 300. It is my opinion and my claim that these uh, papers have not been filled out correctly and should exclude her from appearing on a ballot for member of Board 300 Board of Education on April 4, 2023. The law, the Illinois law regarding these issues have been put in place to make sure that those nominating papers are felt out correctly and exactly as the law requires. Law 5, ILC, ILCS 312 slash 104 from chapter, chapter 102, paragraph 206, 104, X prohibited. And I would like to give you a copy of uh, uh, You may stay seated, we'll have uh, oh, yes. Chris. Yes, come yes, thank you. You. I and what is it a copy of? Um, there is a um, copy of the law, Ex uh, and then there is a copy of 
Illinois Notary Book Handbook? No, I do not. I'm sorry. Um, well, if there's, well, if what there's, is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's. I mean, Did, give her the candidates council has an opportunity to examine the documents, and since, we, especially since we don't have a copy for the candidate at this time, unless you do have another copy for. Oh, it looks like she may have a copy of the. No, the the other one too. technically have to object because there's no, you know, but. What, what's your basis? Well, I mean, it's, I, I don't have anything to be able to follow along. It's the very voluminous. I understand so. that. And was there, do you have a, a do you mind if I speak copy. to it? No, no, please. Um, do you have a, uh, do you have another copy uh, that you could provide for the candidates council? Mm. Is this, is it, would this be the same package you presented to us? Yes. All right. Oh. I think that would. No, uh, it wouldn't be. She, she did not. It's just the sections where I'm going to read okay. the law. Well, let's. It's, uh, let's this is what I'm going to read. Okay. I just wanted to give you, uh, you know, copy of it. What am I reading from? Okay. For, what kind of law it is. Okay. Well, if it's just a citation to That's the fine. law. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I'll draw my objection. Thank you. Okay. All right. Proceed, Ms. Harla. So 5 IL CS 312 slash 6 dash 104 from chapter 102, paragraph 206 104. X prohibited. A notary public shall not use any name or initial in signing certificate other than that by which the notary was commissioned. And because this candidate showed a casual, even sloppy approach to this very important set of documents. I have come to insist that these documents be voided and a candidate be removed from the ballot. Do you have a response? Um, if she's relying solely on the um, Notary Act, then she hasn't proven her, her case and her burden of proof here because there's a whole bunch of election code law that is applicable to this and um, actually shows that um, I in, was in substantial compliance in my notarizations and that should overrule um, anything that she's um, looking at the uh, Notary Act about. Um, and that we want to deliberate. Oh, do you want to ask Norm? Yeah, I was going to ask Norm, um, <coughs> do you have any information regarding <coughs> violations of the Notary Act? violating the well, electoral? Well, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that's our same question we had earlier, and that's mm -hmm. really upon the uh, objector to burden of proof on that one. If this ties in, if there's anything in the act, I mean, in the election code. Right. Well, she's stating specific bits of the election code. No, no she's, she's citing stating. to the Notary Public yeah. Act. I'm sorry, the Notary Public Act. So then the, the question in this context is does what you cited invalidate the and that's really i think if we're deliberating it was is the burden of the objector to establish yeah i can yeah you know this is i i, I saw that this was an issue in at least three of these petitions so um and I did prepare, and it's interesting because if you read the Notary Act, it's very strict and very, you've got to do X, Y, and Z, and if you don't, you're out of the box. But then when you go to case law and you go to the um, election code, it is not near as black and white. And the election code over and over again and the case law that deals with it talks about whether there is fraud, whether there is misrepresentation, whether there is a likelihood of confusion to the voters. And that is, that is what really the judges and case law looks at and all of the treatises um, that deal with election law. I mean, do you have copy of this? 
It's not. Uh, no, ma'am, I'm telling you what, what I have found. I'm not going to, yeah. Um, That's why I, I would say that it's. No, hold on. No, hang on. I, I'm not done. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. So when I look at all of the authority that deals with election law, yeah, it, it says basically if you violate the notary code, that may make you have issues with the notary code itself. You may be, it may be official misconduct depending on how severe it is, but it is not fatal in the election code. The election code is going to look at, and the case law is going to look at whether it was fraud, misrepresentation, voter confusion. And I, I believe uh, Ms. Etler used the phrase substantial compliance, and they do that a lot. Um, they, they say, is it substantial compliance? Is this a mandatory as opposed to a directory <coughs> provision? And from what I have found, the missing middle initial, and, and let me back up a second, and the code book or the handbook, the election handbook that was referenced in at least one or two of these um, the section that talks about the initials is not part of the actual code itself. It's, it's kind of directory language that's attached, but it's not, it is not part of the code itself. So uh, with respect to the middle initial, it's not going to create any fraud. It's not going to create any um, misrepresentation. It's not likely to confuse a voter. And the courts have been very clear that they frown upon denying somebody access to the ballot on technical grounds. So with the middle initial, and quite frankly, Mr. Bach that was here earlier, even with an expired, um, even if your commission was expired, if the candidate relied upon your representation that you were authorized to notarize, the, the candidate's allowed and is entitled to rely upon that. So um, it, it, the election law is much more flexible with notaries and the use of notary stamps than, um, than certainly the Notary Act is. And also, may I, if I could add, I mean, it is her burden to prove it, and she is not, and I not understand she's not a lawyer, but she obviously had somebody helping her. And, um, the, you know, I mean, it's the law, the election law in this case is what we have to follow. So. I object. I would like to proceed to go with the rest of it. It does say that X prohibited a notary public shall not use any name or initial in signing certificates other than that by which the notary was commissioned. I have a copy of, um, of a notary public search for Ms. Ettler, and it is a, in, stated a in there. Um, I believe does, that Ms. Zettler, um, Ms. it's, you have to, when you stamp, I believe when you stamp something, and when you you have you have to follow follow the law, okay. When you apply, I read this. When you apply for a stamp, notary stamp, it's not that easy. It is not that easy. I read the whole book, okay. Yep. And it says in that, and this it says in that I I called Secretary of State because I will I wanted to get a, a proof of her signature when she applied for the notary, but I was the not, I mean, she, they, they said they can't. I don't know if they can or cannot. And um, here, like I said, I read through everything, not even whatever I put, I read through everything. And it does say that is not just where I can go and apply. It, if you've been um, committed of any crime in 20 years, you cannot apply for that so no no one helped me i did my homework because i watch you on school board d300 oh thank you uh, please address your comments to the yes. board and not to the uh, i'm sorry objector and I'm then sorry. i'm going to reiterate what i said earlier do you have any legal authority that uh, a violation of the notary public law invalidates a petition uh, under the election code Let me just look through again. 
you know, I only have notary public act. That's a law. Right. And I think to, to Norm, and Norman is uh, the, the chief uh, of civil division for the state's attorney's office, just to give you an idea who that guy is that's talking. Your arguments are great arguments for a violation of the Notary Act. Um, to Tom's point, what I think Tom is saying, connecting that to something that um, would cause someone to be removed from the ballot, you haven't really done that. Norm has given us some insight into the fact that that may not be easily done or done at all on the basis that you, you given us. Do, do you have Do you have anything in there? I, I don't remember seeing any, but I've read all of these and my head's full of mush. Um, do you have anything in there that that relates to? Um, that relates to the to the uh, uh, election law and how the notary would affect that. I guess. Do you have anything in the, that refers to the election law? I did have what I gave you. That's yeah. All right, and this kind of came in under your opening statement, but you actually proceeded right to your case in chief there, and uh, so I believe we're on objection one. Well, a number of the objections deal with the uh, notary. One um, does, as does two. Uh -huh. Yeah, one and two. And five and, yeah, one, two, and five are all pretty much hinge on the notary. Is that correct, Ms. Alma? Carla? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for... Yes, and then I have um, objection number six, and I have objection. So let's go through some of those other objections. Well, then. let's, uh, if I may, uh, I think we should deal with what the notary public thing is, and if there is no nothing that uh, the objector uh, has to um, <clears throat> as authority that a violation of the notary public act. Uh, requires the striking of a petition, a nominating petition under the election code, then uh, I would uh, I would uh, deny those uh, objections that are related solely to the uh, notary issues. And so that would be one, two, and five. I think so. One, two, and five. Yeah. So then I. Uh, I would find that those three objections would not be sustained. Do you agree? I agree. Do you agree? I agree. Not sustained on okay. to those objections related to the notary public act. Okay. So then let's go to object. We, I'm sorry, don't mean to interrupt, but can we do what you've done in every other case and look at the number of um, the number of. Uh, um, so uh, I see what you're saying. Signatures submitted and how many we Invalidated need. signatures. Because yeah, I think we'll... Um, yeah, I'm, you know... Um, I mean, it's fine if you well, want to do the I other I think way, what she's trying to say, Joe, is, is what is the number but of But I, I don't think we have... Judges. We don't have the same kind of... We're not really, we're not really challenging signatures. You're challenging pages of signatures. Yeah. But if you'll agree, we can come back to it if you like. Let's work through some of these, these others. Okay. okay. Just trying to expedite it because you're short no, on I, time. I appear. I appreciate. Um, so let's go to objection three, page sixteen. Uh, the circulator is uh, Jessica Winstone is incomplete. Missing on the bottom. 
So page 16, which is this, this one here. Mm -hmm. So your contention is that the, um, that the uh, address is incomplete in the area of Gilbert's county of, state of. The county and the. I'm sorry, I, I, I was more reading to myself than anything else. Um, so the, uh, the uh, your contention is that on page 16 that the certification by the circulator at the bottom of the page that the address there is incomplete. And are you referring to the fact that it doesn't have a county and state yes. stated there? any insight as to whether or not that's yeah fatal? yeah I do there is a specific provision I'm, I'm going to read directly from the 2020 electoral boards manual of standard rulings and this is what it says the heading is circulators address is incomplete exactly what you're you're saying and it said and this is what it reads it says the circulators address must be sufficiently complete so as to easily locate the circulator at the listed address so, so that's your guidance is, is the address that, here, does it allow you to easily locate the circulator at the listed address? And based on that at the, it says, what are we saying? It's 169, uh, Red, what does it say? Redmond? It looks Redmond? like Redmond Drive. Redmond yeah. Drive and Gilbert's. Uh, I find that that's sufficient to uh, locate the uh, circulator. I would agree. I agree. So I would say that that objection is not sustained. So that's number two, or rather number three. And does the board agree with that? I agree. Yes, I yes. agree. Objection four, petition page 12, line 10, 15, et cetera, et cetera. That these, the issue here is that the uh, initials are struck uh, without any initials nor filing of certificate of deletions refers to page 17 and 21 of the candidate's guide. We're, we're, we'll agree with that one. All right, so, um, so if you're saying that because they are struck, that those signatures don't count, then yes, I think that we yes, all understand that to they, be the case. That's it fine. should be, yeah. go, it has to go through certain stuff. It has to, you know, if it's stricken, from the uh, petition by the circulator. We don't know who right. or the candidate. It, it, it couldn't says, hurt anybody but them. Yeah, the person striking the signature must initial the petition and then put um, the quote of the, um, hold on. We don't know who struck them. That's why they were not initialed, so. Right. Might have been done when they were, you know, it's like sometimes you start something and you stop it and they strike and they start again. Right. We have no idea. And you uh, said you have no objection. No objection. Yeah. All right. So that we can move on from that. So those signatures will be stricken. Is it? Is it your? Are you contending then, Ms. Harla, that um, that the whole petition is no good because of that, or you page. that the whole page is? You're saying that the whole. So, I mean page the pages, the, the the that's, page that's twelve and thir uh, um, thirteen and fifteen. Um, I mean, we don't agree with that. That's a whole other story. Well, what's your response? That, that just because somebody's struck a couple of um, signatures on a page doesn't have any imp impact on the rest of the page. There's no indication that that was done in some sort of way to, I don't I even know what, how but to respond to that, to be honest with you. So I just don't, I don't think that, um, is uh, I don't think that that's, let me finish, please. It's, um, it doesn't, it doesn't show fraud, it doesn't show any inclinations toward fraud, anything like that. Yes, there were some that were struck out and they should not be counted, obviously, but I don't think it has anything to do with the rest of the page. I, I, 
I tend to agree. Is there any is there any guidance in the? No, um, you know, actually, you know, if you read, it does say all of those things, but it, it, I believe it's clearly those are directory and not mandatory because what is you're striking names off. Let's say you strike one name off of a petition that has 10 names on it. The other nine you're going to disenfranchise from being able to have their names be valid, and you've stricken the one off that you don't want on there for whatever reason. So right. that is not one that I think is going to cause any fraud, misrepresentation, confusion to the voter. No. Yes. You don't have to. I'm not saying that you lose the whole sheet. What I'm trying to say, if if she would go by the law, by the 2023 candidate quote. Mm -hmm. of uh, Illinois State Board of Elections. Mm -hmm. It says here that you can strike the name, but then when you put initial, then you have to go and and and, and put a, a different um, a certificate. And this is what it is. It is a certification of deletion. And there is a, a law and it says, a person striking the signature must initial the petition at the place where the signature is stricken. The person striking the uh, signature must sign a certification listing on a page number, a line number of the each signature stricken from the petition. Such certification should be filed as a part of the petition. And, and Ms. Harla, I understand that. I think that's a protection for the candidate so that somebody like me doesn't come along and put lines through the petition and then disqualify her. And so and I, then, and she's the only one that would be harmed. And mm -hmm. then also, is there anything in the election code that uh, mandates uh, the result that you're asking for? that the entire page be invalidated. No, I did not say that. Oh, okay, so that's no. a, there was a misunderstanding. I so you have an agreement that, that those specific that names... If there okay. is no initial, then it should be straightening. It should be taking off the the, list, the whole list of the name, ten, let's say 10 people, two people, whatever, whoever was there. If one uh, name is striking and you put the initial there, it's fine. If you don't put the initial and you don't to this uh, the certification, then the whole um, list should be thrown away. How do you get to that conclusion, then, um, is the question? Is there something that we're not familiar with that you're referring to? That's right, Joe. Is there a legal authority for you to support your argument? And what I mean by authority, is there anything in the election code or case law? And then also, I, I note that in previous cases, we've determined um, what the number of not sustained objections to signatures uh, was uh, once achieved or once arrived at um, would make it impossible for the objector to prevail. And do, do you, do, does either side have a number on this case? Because I know we have a I lot of. That's the argument that no, we, but she's trying to strike those signatures. Right. So if, oh. she, if they've got 190 needed. signatures right. and they only need 50, how, how many would that page well, even? If, if you have. look at all of her objections, you add up the potential Worst case scenario, I think there's like 40. And then that would still not be sufficient not to close. prevail. That's what, that's my point. I see, I see. So we could probably come back to that and then uh, so we would rule what, on that later. What, uh, Ms. Zettler, who is the uh, uh, candidate's attorney, pointed out is that 190 were submitted, is that correct? 97, something like that. 94. 94. More than 190. Uh, I'm sorry, say it again. More than 190. More than 190? Uh, I guess 194 is uh, the number that you've listed in your in that, in that motion to dismiss okay. that you submitted. There it is, yeah. I knew I'd seen a number <clears throat> like that somewhere. So the, I think what Tom is trying to say, that if you <clears throat> struck all the pages, petition page, um, those would still not be sufficient to prevail alone on that point. So right. maybe we could come back and revisit that if it is uh, in play at that time. 
<laughs> is there an agreement on this school? I don't know if the number is different as to how many signatures need to be. 50. 50, okay. Yeah. So if, if we, I think if we just follow this particular thing on objection four, um, I'm, I'm sympathetic. I don't think, I think what you're, what you're going after isn't a protection for objectors, it's a protection for the, from somebody in uh, um, illicitly uh, altering their records. It's one way for them to account for what it is that they've removed and so I, I don't believe that that, uh, that that objection should be sustained. Robin? I have an agreement. Tom? I, I agree. Okay. Objection five was the, the notary again. Objection six, the statement of economic interests. <coughs> Randy Gothier's job title is listed as stay-at-home mom, which has been struck out to read school board CUSD 300. Randy Gothier is not an employee nor a member of CUSD 300 or the board. Um, well, that's where I again go to the question is what legal authority does the object, do you have as the objector uh, that that, um, and I don't even think you're asking for, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the relief that she's even asking for an objection at six? There is none. There is not. She's really not even asking for relief under objection six. So, so are you are you uh, are you arguing that the entire petition should be invalidated because she has crossed out stay at yes. home mom, and replaced that school board? It's a it. It's still um, people will still put to be voted on on April. I so. It is a law. It it, it, it has to look. So, so it, it so it actually is proper. So, it, okay. as as an employee, um, right now I'm in the process of we're doing our annual statement of economic interest filing, because I am currently an employee. I would say I'm the county clerk. Now, if I was going to run for state's attorney next election, and I fill out my statement of economic interest. I would fill it out with the prospective um, position of state's attorney when I filled that out. So when she put in school board CUSD 300, that would be the appropriate entry to put on that. Uh, it says job title. I understand what it says. <laughs> That's the job that she's looking to, to attain. And that, that form is used across the state uh, in a variety of contexts. So that would be the proper means to fill out that form. So why it, on the bottom it says uh, office department agency that requires you to file this form, it says she, she is running for a candidate of uh, school board E300. Right, that's why she put that in, Job. The, in the top, right. And just, if I could just do that, I filed all of our petitions because they have jobs and you know. Um, and when we were in line, and by the way, best pe petition filing season I've ever been through. Oh, you guys are great. Um, but one of your um, employees came by and took all of our, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Economic expense she or uh, interest Statement sheets. Of yeah. yes. um, and said she would enter them and then bring us the receipts, which is great because then all you have to do is get everything. Right. And then she came back on and she said, no, you guys filled these out wrong. You have to strike these out and put in the, um, the, um, the perspective, perspective. Position. yeah. Yeah. So right. I just I agree with Ms. Sala. It's confusing. It it's is confusing. very confusing. Yeah. But it's yeah. They told us to fix it. So yeah. yes. <laughs> so based on that, I would find that it's kind of a flaw in the uh, statement of economic interest form itself. Uh, under that job title, it should probably more likely say job title sought. And so based on that, I would say that that objection uh, is not sustained. I would agree, not sustained. I would agree. And I know these statements are confusing to fill out. I've they filled are. them out they for really years are. also. Yeah. And it's not making them any easier. No. So given the visitation of all these objections, I, 
I don't believe we can sustain the objection as a whole. So I would find it not sustained. Would you agree? I would agree in that the candidate's name should be placed on the ballot. Yes, I agree. The candidate's name should go on the ballot. Okay, great. Um, Thank as you. mentioned before, we'll be back on the 17th at 10 a.m. to deliver our written um, uh, written decision. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Harley. I appreciate the time <laughs> that you took to, to do this. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Paula. Places put all the paper in my tiny little <laughs> space here. Okay. So the next hearing is for Clarissa Bartlett versus Olatula Tola McKinde. Is that correct? Very yes. good. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't do as well on Gauthier. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would the uh, parties in identify themselves, please, starting with the objector? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Clarissa Bartlett. I live at uh, 340 Old Mill Lane, Hampshire, Illinois. Um, I reside in District 300. I'm here to object to the nominating papers filed. Oh, Ms. Uh, Paula, before you begin that, oh, we just want to identify you. And then uh, do you go by... Tola, is that what you prefer to be? Yes. Okay. I mean, to make it easier for everybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, Tola, would you identify yourself for the for the hearing? Your name and address? Uh, my name is Olu Tola, Tola for short, McKinney. Um Address is 2311 Upland Road in Pinky Grove, Illinois, 60140. Okay. And if you would administer the oaths, please. Oh, you know what? And I'm sorry, Ms. Zettler, you oh, should yes, identify Nancy yourself. Nancy Zettler, well. attorney for the um, candidate. Thank you. Yes, I do. Okay. And now uh, you may proceed with your argument if you wish. Um, I am here to to. Uh, <clears throat> Um, actually, first thing, if you're going to deny our continuance, then you need to strike her document from the record. She just handed us and proceed only with our petition and no written response. Um, to that point uh, and deliberate with the board, I would suggest that we um, hold that motion to dismiss and, until uh, uh, the candidate's case in chief and uh, see uh, deal with it at that time if it's necessary. Yeah, I, we are not, at this point, we are not recognizing that document that was distributed earlier. So we're starting fresh. Yes. Um, in that case, I am here to object to the nominating papers filed for Ms. Bolatua McKinde and that her request, I am requesting for her name to um, not appear on the ballot school board member this April 4th, 2023. My objections consist of mislabeling the name of a village, missing a zip code, fabricating her job title, not matching her name from the statement of candidacy to her printed name, and otherwise adding a nickname that doesn't match her signature. There's also a name struck out without an attached affidavit or initial, which invalidates that page. Ms. McKinney has her petitions notarized by Ms. Zettler, who failed to provide her signature with her middle initial on each page. With these errors, I believe Ms. McKinney's nomination petition should be invalidated and in, is also in violation of Illinois Compiled stat, Statutes 312-6-104, Acts Prohibited, Section A and B. Um, I would suggest to the board that um, we 
dealt with these notary issues earlier, and I think uh, the can uh, the objector was present, so probably was familiar with our uh, analysis in that case. And uh, I would suggest that uh, we follow the precedent that we've established in the previous case and uh, find all of the objections related to the Notary Public Act not sustained. Um, I agree. Um, I'd like to just take a moment to just sort of walk through them with the uh, objector. Um, and I'm sorry, were you, were you, were you finished then? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Bartlett. Um, so objection one, um, in summary, was, a, was an argument uh, against her, uh, um, her notary statement. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, you, I, I assume you heard, but if you hadn't, and for the sake of the record, we had conversation during the, um, the other uh, cases we had uh, some insight provided by our attorney, uh, Mr. Vinton, that indicated that uh, those objections are not fatal to um, this particular kind of situation. Could be completely different if it was a deed to a house or something of that nature, but um, that is not fatal. So objection one, I would uh, suggest that, that it not be sustained. Board members, do you agree? I agree. I agree. Okay. We'll go to number two. Um, so on petition page one, the village is listed as Pingree Road. So let's take a look at that. Okay. This one's easier to, it's a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a little yes, easier thanks. <laughs> this is the copy too, right, Robin? Yes. Yeah. 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 So are we. Oops, oh, sorry. Uh, Ms. Bartlett, is there a particular uh, line? It's in the... Oh, in the... It, okay, in the attestation at the bottom. Um, so you're saying that the... Well, I'm going to not say what you're saying. I'll let you <laughs> say what you're saying. Um, Specifically, where on the page is it that you're referring to, just for the sake of the record? Petition page one, the village is listed as Pingree Road. No such village exists in the district. Okay. And you're talking about the bottom part, not on one of the signature lines, right? <clears throat> yes. Okay. And so we had this discussion. I'm, again, kind of deliberating with my cohort here. And, and then my question also would be, is Pinkery Grove uh, the municipality that provides postal service? If you're aware. Um, my post office staff. Hampshire is. So the, the test was whether or not we could find this person. Well, I think that applied to the circulator. That's what we're talking about. Oh, I'm seeing it over here on this. On the, okay. Uh, uh, so on sheet on one. Yeah, not on the statement of candidates. No, we're not talking about the statement oh, of okay. candidates. I don't think we're talking about the petition page one. So the question is, well, based on that, if it's the circular and we're talking about the uh, page sheet one, uh, based on our previous analysis and the precedent that we set earlier today that uh, the address uh, only needs to uh, enable someone to locate the circulator, right. then I would say that the objection is, is not sustained. I, I would also agree because it's also the, the candidate is the circulator and the candidate has elsewhere in the petition package um, identified her address. So we'd be able to find Ms. McKinney. I agree. Her name and address is right at the top of the page um, in Pingree Grove. Right. Typed out. So. 
All right. So are we all in agreement that this would not be sustained? I agree. Tom? Yes. Uh, not sustained. Okay. Uh, objection three, petition page three and four, the circulator's zip code is missing. Uh, that seems to also come under the heading of the same analysis uh, of whether or not we could locate the circulator. So based on that, I would find that that objection is not sustained. Yeah. We have the rest of the address. I agree. I agree. Not sustained. Um, objection four on the statement of economic interest. Ms. McKinley's job title is listed as school board member CUSD 300. Well, the tool is not a member nor employed by the school member CUSD 300. Uh, for the sake of the record, um, that is a prospective uh, job that you're, in this case, uh, hoping to win by way of, uh, you know, uh, election. So I would say that would also be not sustained. Do you agree? Yes. Based on that, I would say not sustained. I agree, not sustained. Objection five on the statement of economic interest. The name Olatula McKinday does not match the name printed on the statement of candidacy. Yeah, and the, and the statement of candidacy Um, do you have, uh, Norm, any insight as to the necessity for those two to be identical? Well, no, and I don't, in all candor, I don't think they have to be identical. Nicknames are allowed. Um, and again, it goes back to that. Is, is this likely to um, confuse a voter, misrepresent, <laughs> um, create some fraud? And, and so that's what that's what the board has to look at is right. do you think the missing tola is going to confuse create some fraud uh, misrepresent i don't think so i, I don't think so I, and i for that i would not sustain that objection would you agree i agree not I, sustained i agree not sustained um similar sort of objection number six, the printed name. And I, I, I think we have the same situation. We're not, we're not fraudulently trying to mislead anyone. I would agree. Can we record this? Yes, it's being recorded now. I know, but like yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so based on that, I would also say not sustained. Not sustained. Objection seven on petition page three, line three. I would say based on the objection itself being vague, uh, I would say it's not sustained. Let's have a look just for grins. Oh, and is the objection because it's stricken, Ms. Bartlett? Yes. Well, okay. I would say the objection itself doesn't say. Right, the yeah. petition well. doesn't specify what right. the objection is, so there's nothing to sustain. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Not I sustained? agree. Not sustained. And objection eight, is that not the same thing as objection six, or is that somehow? Ms. Bartlett? Is objection eight not the same thing as objection six, or am I not reading it right? Similar, yes. Similar. Based on? Yes. Uh, so, uh, based on that, I would also say that that would not be sustained then. I would agree, not sustained. Agreed. Given the outcome of the individual objections, I would say that the objection is not sustained and that Ms. McKinday should uh, remain on the ballot. Do the rest of you agree? I do agree. Her name should appear on the ballot. Agreed. Candidate's name should 
the feet printed on the ballot. Including the TOLA. <laughs> Including the TOLA, right. Yeah, for sure. So you put on that. Uh, so uh, again, as you know, we'll be back on the 17th at 10 for the written response. And then, so how does that, will, will, if we don't come, you'll send us a copy we'll send of it to you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. And thank you again, both of you, <laughs> for your civility and decorum. All right. <clears throat> and the final <coughs> case, if they're all are ready, is Clarissa Bartlett versus Nancy Zettler. Ms. Bartlett, do you need a minute, minute to put your things together or? Okay. Uh, then you, uh, well, for the sake of uh, clarity in the record, um, if you would, Ms. Bartlett, please uh, give your name and address for the record. My name is Clarissa Bartlett. I reside in District 300. My address is 340 Old Mill Lane, Hampshire, Illinois. Thank you. Ms. Nancy Sattler for Yorkshire Court, Algonquin, Illinois. I also reside in D300. <clears throat> Um, so, Ms. Campbell, you may um, proceed. I'm Bartlett. Why did I get Campbell? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm here to object to the nominating papers filed for Ms. Nancy Zettler that request her name appear on the ballot for school board member this April 4th, 2023. My objections consist of multiple violations of Illinois law in the Illinois Notary Handbook. Ms. Settler's signature failed to include her middle initial, which does not match her printed commission's notary stamp. Her stamp does read Nancy A. Settler. Each page she notarized is missing her middle initial, which will void each page. In addition, Ms. Settler notarized each and every one of her own nomination for petition pages. Ms. Settler is named as a party in the transaction and would clearly benefit from this transaction. There is also a name struck out without an attached affidavit or initial which invalidates that page with these errors, along with the fact that I believe she has a conflict of interest. I object to that. There is nothing, no uh, objection based in conflict of interest has been put forth so far. In the petition. In the petition. Sustained. I would sustain it. I would agree. Agreed. With these errors, I believe Ms. Settler's nomination petition should be invalidated or would violate the ILCS statute prohibited section A and B. Just for clarification, you're sustaining my objection. Yes. Okay. Right? Right. Because it okay. hadn't yet been brought <laughs> okay. up. Right. Because you just sustain and, and then also you have opt she has opportunity to do an opening statement too if she wants. Um Yes. Do we do we want to go th as we have been doing? Go through these. Do you, Whatever, do you need to make you, it doesn't matter to me. How okay. do we want to do it? Let's go through the objections then uh, one at a time, and we'll give uh, Ms. Zettler an opportunity to reply as, as oh, I uh, uh, appropriate. So, uh, objection one. Uh, this objection, in summary, um, is that her name uh, appears as Nancy A. Zettler, but her signatures don't have the A, and you mentioned in the handbook, uh, the uh, notary public handbook, that that is prohibited. Is that the nature of your objection in that Yes, case? along with the, the law. So um, for the sake of the record, although we've said it a couple of times already, um, while that is a very good argument for um, an issue regarding notary uh, law, Fortunately, there is precedent given in election law that that is not what they call a fatal flaw. Um, as, as we heard from uh, Mr. Vinton earlier today, uh, he gave some insight into that uh, from the uh, reference that he that he had. So, excuse me, what was the reference, and can I have a copy, please? That? Oh, I, I think what I had referenced was the 2020 Electoral Board's Manual of Standard Rulings. I didn't get a copy. It's oh. a, yeah, it's something you could purchase. It's not yeah. a, it's a book, yeah. But we had to give copies to you in order for us to validate our information. So right. isn't so that we're, the same in reverse? No, it's not, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But we'd be happy to show that to you if you want to take a look at it later, but it's, it's, it's a book. We can't give everybody a copy of, of that book. 
it's like the law, you know. We we don't we also don't hand out uh, copies of all the law books, but you can certainly look at them if you like. But I need to submit my copies in order for them to be heard. You correct? do. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely right. That's for the, the clarification. Law. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, so objection one, I'm inclined to uh, not sustain that. Go. Board members? I agree. I would not sustain that objection. Okay. I agree, not sustained. Objection two. Nancy Zettler acted as notary public on petition pages 1 through 16 and 18 through 22. These petition pages name Nancy Zettler as candidate. Nancy Zettler is clearly the named as a party in the transaction, would clearly benefit from the transaction. Therefore, these pages are improperly notarized, which is a prohibited act and should be voided. I would, uh, first of all, I would submit to the board that a uh, transaction, uh, definition of a transaction is a, a sale or doing business. And also, I think the reference is to, uh, and so by, based on that alone, uh, um, I don't think it's applicable and I would say not sustained. And, and uh, Norm, do you have any insight into the differences? Yeah, and and I sympathize with the objectors because if you yeah. look at the Notary Act, it is you know it's like this is the way it is, black and white. It's right. hardcore, but it's not uncommon with a lot of laws when you then apply that mm -hmm. that that law in this case the Notary Act to some other law that the state of Illinois has passed it gets more gray and uh, and there there isn't that fine line. And so with this specifically, and Mr. Cahill mentioned this, the case law looks at when you notarize your own paper, is it a transaction and are you a party to that transaction? And so they look at it like um, a, a transaction is like a sale of a real estate. You could not notarize that you are receiving a piece of property from your grandmother but are you really a party to some transaction here? And the case law says no. And then referring to that book I just referenced a, a few minutes ago, the Electoral Board's Manual of Standard Rulings, there's a, sp a specific section that talks about notary sign the petition. And, um, and it says, although section five ILCS 312 slash six dash 104 B of the Illinois Notary Act provides that a notary shall not acknowledge any instrument in which the notary name appears as a party to the transaction. The act does not provide that any instrument acknowledged by the notary is invalid where the notary has committed an act prohibited under the act. Rather, the notary act provides remedies for this, for this, uh, it could be official misconduct, but it's not going to invalidate. And again, they go back to, um, they go back to the fraud misrepresentation. Uh, is it going to mislead a voter because the the um, the candidate has notarized the circular circulator signature? So, given that, um, I would be inclined to to um, to not. Uh, not my words. So not uh, what's the not word? Sustain. Sustain. Thanks. <laughs> not sustain that it's particular objection. <laughs> I would agree. I would um, not sustain the objection. Agree. Uh, the ob objection should not be sustained. Very well. With the, um, in summary, with both of the objections not being, uh, uh, do we have objection three or is it? Oh, I'm sorry, objection three. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I did not. Um, objection three on pages 12. <coughs> Lines nine and 10 are struck, but initials and no certification of the struck names followed the petition page. And again, in the previous case, we discussed it, but for the sake of the record, um, that is again, a, not a fatal flaw. Um, and I believe is more protection for the candidate than, than anything else from modification after they submit it. I would not find that uh, uh, sustaining the, uh, argument uh, rather I agree I would not sustain objection three and I would agree not uh, sustained and even if it were sustained it would not be sufficient for the objector to prevail yeah. 
So, given in summary, um, I would be inclined to say that uh, Ms. Zettler stays on the ballot um, and that the objection is not sustained. Do you agree? Yes, you agree? I, I agree. Ms. Zettler's name should appear on the ballot. Yes, I agree. The uh, candidate's name sh should be printed on the ballot. Very well. Uh, the written uh, response will be given on the 17th at 10 a.m. If not right here, uh, somewhere near here, we'll post it uh, in the clerk's office. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all for attending. And to the folks that uh, submitted their objections, I appreciate all the work that, that went into that. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Good to see you, Ted. Thank you. Thank you.